good morning audience so in the last class we were discussing about this chapter called as taxation of unexplained income where we try to understand that we don't have to read the chapter we just have to read the summary line which is there in the first line of the chapter where we came and said in the exam if there is any question which comes and says that if you are requested for a source of any kind of income you have expenditure you have investment you have or any kind of money which you have if you are able to explain the source of investment great if you are not able to explain the source of investment or if you try to explain the source of investment but assessing officer is not satisfied the incomes which you have the investments which you have the assets which you have the money which you have every single item becomes an unexplained income this is what we discussed in the last class and we ended with that yes <coughs> i told you that whenever you have something called as unexplained income the issue which comes with income tax is that income tax is asking now for a 78% tax income tax is asking for a 78% tax how does this 78% work it is 60% of tax plus 25% of mandatory surcharge and a 4% of cess so you are ending up in a 78% effective tax rate model and you have to pay that 78% tax rate without claiming any kind of deductions expenses basic exemption limit nothing will be permitted to you maybe you can claim one small item called as rebit maybe you can claim one small item called as rebit beyond that everything else is not allowed for you yes this is what the idea was when it comes to unexplained income this is what we ended the last class discussion this is what we ended with the last class discussion there is one small topic pending in this not very important from exam but just to clarify to you we have something called as hundi we have something called as hundi now what is hundi if i have to explain to you properly hundi is basically like a hawala transaction what transaction hawala transaction so if i have to justify it to you let's say for example let's say for example you are in a scenario where you are going to do a hundi transaction you are going to do what you are going to do a hundi transaction now what do you mean by hundi transaction rahul i don't know how many people have watched it there was this very famous movie in india called as shivaji the boss correct yes now the shivaji the boss like if you notice what happened is shivaji which was rajnikanth had actually taken money from politicians had taken the illegal money from the politicians and he had requested that if you want to me not to go and inform the government 50% of it is mine 50% of it is yours illana everything will go to department illana everything will go to department this is what his condition was yes or no yes now when he did that if you remember the moment he got all this money the moment he got all this money he wanted to make it white money and so what he did is he went to us he went to us he went to someone and he showed one uh, 100 rupees bill 100 or 1000 rupees bill he showed he showed a 100 or 1000 rupees bill the person saw the serial number and then automatically gave him us dollars yes or no yes that transaction is called as a hundi transaction that transaction is called as a hundi transaction what do you mean by a hundi transaction you are looking at a scenario where you are mr a you are mr a you are mr a you want to get money from someone else like say b let's say b what are you doing is you are going from a to b you are going from a to b and you are coming and saying i will give you money on one side you give me an hundi i will give you money on one side you give me hundi so what happens is this person will give him money in exchange for it this person will give him a hundi this person will give him a hundi yes or no what will i do with this hundi i will take this hundi and go to another person called c for example i'll go to another person called c i will surrender this hundi to him i will surrender this hundi to him and get money in exchange and get money in exchange basically you are doing a simple loan transaction you are doing a simple loan transaction the problem is the instrument which you are using against it is called as a hundi the instrument which you are using against it is called as hundi now why is hundi so significant rahul hundi is in negotiable instrument act are considered illegal hundi is in negotiable instrument act are considered illegal because hundi is not a permissible mode of instrument it's not a permissible mode of instrument for the simple reason that people use this hundi for illegal transactions for what transactions illegal transactions let's say for example you are in taliban okay let's say for example you are in taliban which means you are in afghanistan okay now what happened is you are in taliban planning to attack india planning to attack india now when you want to plan to attack india obviously you need weapons yes or no now when you want weapons do you think you can bring it from afghanistan to india in a ship or in a flight obviously no yes so what you will do is you will go to someone in india you will go to someone in india and you will come and say let's say for example mr x mr x 
you will go to a person called mr x in india and you will come and say dear mr x i want weapons i want to attack india i want weapons i want to attack india mr x will ask for money yes or no now imagine no do you think that mr a who's from afghanistan would have carried all the money and come to india obviously no he would have not carried any money to india so what happens is he will come and say i cannot give you money in india i cannot give you money in india i don't have so much money in india for me to buy weapons from you in india but i have enough money in my own country i have enough money in my own country so what will happen is mr x will have another person mr x will have an other person in afghanistan itself in afghanistan itself what mr x will say you do one thing you go and give this money to x a you go and give this money to x a so what will happen is mr a will go and give the money to x a mr x will go and give this money to x a and x a will come and call x and come and say i have received the money you give the weapons i have received the money you give the weapons so what will happen x will give the weapons to a x will give the weapons to a in india or outside india in india so if you notice what has happened transaction a part of the transaction has happened outside india but a part of the transaction is happening in india where what is happening is you are purposely making a transaction outside india because it is illegal in india it is illegal in india this transaction which you are doing this transaction which you are doing where you are giving money to mr x and coming and saying that you can in exchange buy money uh, in exchange buy rupees this is called as a hundi transaction this is called as an hundi transaction in indian words very famously we use the word hawala transaction in india very famously we use hawala transaction where we come and say that you have done a hawala transaction basically you wanted weapons in india you did not pay the money in exchange for that weapons in india you paid it outside india you paid it outside india which income tax did not get to know which income tax did not get to know but until the time you got the weapons in india it was a loan given yes or no you gave a loan to mr x a you gave a loan to mr x a income tax comes and says that if at all you receive any money from someone if at all you receive any money from someone in the form of a hundi in the form of a hundi the money which you received will be treated as unexplained the money which you received will be treated as unexplained yes understand the difference understand the difference until now until now i always came and told you that whenever you have any kind of money or income or investment or expense assessing officer will give you a chance assessing officer will give you a chance he will come and say this is what you have done you explain me the source so if i am not satisfied i will tax it if i am not satisfied i will tax it so in earlier cases we gave you a chance we gave you a chance in this scenario there is no chance in this scenario there is no chance the provision come and say when a transaction happens through hundi it is deemed as income it is deemed as income you don't have to justify and all you don't have to justify who doesn't have to justify assessee does not have to justify because it is treated as income it is treated as income no one will come and ask you anything no one will come and ask you anything which means in this scenario why will straight forward come and say you are doing an unexplained transaction i don't even have to justify i don't even have to justify it is directly taxable fully taxable of yes this is what is called as a hundi transaction there is only one exception to this this exception comes and says that i will not tax it i will not to tax it if you are doing this hundi transaction through an account pay check what check account pay check rahul why are you talking about account pay check understand no why did you do this hawala transaction because you did not want to show the money yes or no you did not want to show the money because the money was illegal money the money was illegal money now if you are going to do this transaction through account pay check do you think department will not get to know department will easily get to know because you are also having a bank account the other person is also having a bank account clear cut case you can find out clear cut case you can find out these kind of transactions will only happen in cash normally yes or no because the money is illegal money so they saying boss if you do the transaction through account pay check then i will not tax it for you if you do it anyway other than by account pay check i will tax it for you i will tax it for you yes or no yes or no yes let's read the provision it says where the amount is borrowed on hundi or is repaid along with interest and is received by other than by account pay check and is received by other than by account pay check in that case the amount borrowed or repaid shall be deemed to be the income of the person shall be deemed to be the income of the person where the borrowed money has already been deemed as an income shall not again be treated as income on repayment it shall not be treated as income on repayment now if you notice like i told you see the top no it says where the assessee has incurred any expenditure and the assessing officer is asking for such explanation 
or he is giving explanation but he is not satisfied, then it becomes an income. Now, notice, no, in the scenario, I am telling assessing officer will give you an opportunity to explain. In this scenario, have I given something like this? Have I given something like this? Nothing. It is directly coming and saying where the amount is borrowed or repaid other than by account paycheck, the amount borrowed or repaid shall be deemed to be the income. Straightforward income. No explanation required. No explanation required. You will directly tax everything as income. You will directly tax everything as income. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Right. <clears throat> this is your six transactions. You are doing a transaction in cash. You are doing transaction in asset. You are doing transaction in money. You are doing any partial transaction in asset or cash. You are doing any unexplained expenditure. And the last is you are doing a borrowing of fundi. You are doing a borrowing of fundi. If you do any of these transactions, it will become taxable as unexplained income. I told you, if you are going to tax something as unexplained income, it will be taxable at the rate of 60% plus a surcharge of 25% plus a cess of 4% arriving at an effective tax rate of 78%. Arriving at an effective tax rate of 78%. If you are going to tax something as 78%, you will not be allowed any expense or deduction. You will not be allowed any kind of losses. You can also not claim any basic exemption limit. You can also not claim any basic exemption limit. Rebate can be claimed. Rebate is eligible. Rebate is eligible. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes? No, 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 no. Rahul, I have some money. I did not pay tax on that money. Technically, it is called as black money. Technically, it is called as black money. Income tax will come and say, Day, you should have paid tax on this money. You did not pay tax. So, therefore, I am collecting 78%. Therefore, I am collecting 78%. But that 78% is a tax. That 78% is a tax. Over and above that, you have cheated me also. Over and above that, you have cheated me also. For the cheating part also, I will collect from you something called as penalty. I will collect something called as penalty. Income tax comes and says, in case of an unexplained income, the assessing officer may also levy 10% of the tax payable as a penalty, 10% of the tax payable as a penalty, which means if your income is 100, if your income is 100, tax on that will be 78%, tax on that will be 78%, penalty on that will be 7.8, will be 7.8, what is 7.8 Raul? It is 10% of tax, it is 10% of tax, which means effectively you will have to pay to government. 85.8. How much you'll have to pay? 85.8. This is what the money will go from your hands to the department. This is what will happen from your hands to department. Rahul, 100 rupees was the income. 85.8 you have paid to department. How much is left, Rahul? 14.8. 14.2. Rahul, this 14.2 has now become white money, not become white money. It has become white money. It has become white money, Rahul. Why you have become white money? Because you have paid tax on it. You have paid tax on it. The moment you have paid tax on it, you have declared the income. The moment you have declared the income, income tax will say, yes, this is a valid legal income. This is a valid legal income. So, the 14.2 will become a valid income for you. You can treat it as white money. You can treat it as white money. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is what the provisions of unexplained income are. Any doubts? No. Can we go forward? Yes, I have, I think, one or two questions in my question bank. Let's see the questions. Yeah, it says, Mr. C has borrowed on Hundi a sum of 25,000 by bearer check on 11th September 2023 and has repaid the same with an interest amounting to 30,000 by account pay check on 12th October 2023. The AO wants to treat the amount borrowed as income during the previous year. Is the AO valid? Is the AO valid? Is the AO valid? Yes. Like I told you, whenever you are doing a transaction of Hundi, whether you are borrowing or repaying money, it should happen only by account pay check. Is it happening by account pay check? Is it happening by account pay check? No, it is happening by bearer check. If it is happening by bearer check, bearer check is permissible, not permissible. It is not permissible, which means any money which is borrowed or repaid on Hundi will be treated as unexplained income. Will be treated as unexplained income and therefore the action of AO is valid. The action of AO is valid. Yes, I told you how to write a question like this in theory. You have to first write the provision, then write the facts, then write the analysis, end with the 
conclusion and with the conclusion let's read it says section 69d provides that where an amount is borrowed on a hundi or an amount due is repaid thereon or an amount due is repaid thereon otherwise than by account pay check the amount so borrowed or repaid shall be deemed to be the income of the person shall be deemed to be the income of the person borrowing or repaying the amount for the previous year in which the amount was so borrowed or repaid in the present case mr c has borrowed 25000 on hundi by way of bearer check by way of bearer check therefore it shall be deemed to be the income of mr c for the previous year 2324 since the repayments of the same along with interest was made by account pay check the same would not be hit by the provisions of section 69d the same would not be hit by the provisions of section 69d and therefore the actions of ao treating the amount borrowed is valid therefore the amount borrowed is valid if you notice the first para was your provision the first para was your provision in this the first line here was your fact yes after that subsequent line was your analysis and therefore on the bottom you find conclusion and therefore on the bottom you find conclusion yes this is what your sequence is this is what your sequence is you have to follow the sequence if you are writing a theory if you are writing a theory clear clear yes next question the assessing officer during the course of the assessment of a firm found that it had paid rent in respect of its business premises amounting to 60000 amounting to 60000 which was not debited in the books of the accounts for the previous year ended 31st march 2024 there is a firm who has paid rent there is a firm who has paid rent but has not claimed as an expense but has not claimed as expense the firm did not explain the source of payment for rent the firm did not explain the source of payment for rent the assessing officer is proposing to make the addition of 60000 in the hands of the firm because he did not explain the source the firm claims that even if the addition is made the sum of 60000 should be allowed as a deduction while computing the business income since it is used for the business since it is used for the business basically what the assessee is coming and saying is you tax 60000 for me you tax 60000 for me you also allow 60000 for me net net my income is zero so you should pay tax of zero this is what assessee comes and says assessing officer says get lost boss i will only take the 60000 i will only take the 60000 so therefore your income will become 60000 and i will tax 78% i will tax 78% is assessing officer right or assessee right assessing officer is right why is assessing officer right very good the moment you have any kind of expenditure which is not explained the moment you have any kind of expenditure which is not explained satisfactory the expenditure becomes an income the expenditure becomes an income and the moment something is income you cannot claim any kind of deduction or expense against it so even though it is an income it will not be allowed as a deduction it will not be allowed as a deduction and therefore the contention of assc is not valid the contention of assc is not valid only the contention of assessing officer is valid only the contention of assessing officer is valid he can tax 60000 fully without allowing any kind of deductions even if you have claimed nothing as an expense even if you have claim nothing as an expense yes yes this is what your chapter on unexplained income is clear yes can we go for to a smaller chapter yes <clears throat> moving on to the next smaller chapter before we start our head of income before we start our head of income we are looking into agricultural income we are looking into agricultural income tax yes now when i started the subject itself when i started the subject itself i came and told you that whenever you have any kind of tax whenever you have any kind of tax this chapters or this subject only talks about income tax this chapter only talks about income tax this chapter does not talk about any kind of agricultural income tax it does not talk about agricultural income tax which means if you have any kind of agricultural income tax it will be taxable under state laws it will be taxable under state laws yes or no yes so therefore the question which then comes is rahul something is going to become taxable under state law something is going to become taxable under state law now i do agree that now i do agree that but the problem comes in scenarios where i don't know how to find out how much is taxable i don't know how much to how, how to find out how much is taxable apdi na empty artham raul let's say for example you are in a business of creating tea you are in a business of creating tea now if you are into the business of creating tea you first have to grow the tea leaves yes so you are growing the tea leaves then you are sending it to your factory factory is making tea leaves out uh, factory is making the chai patti out of it factory is making the chai patti out of it now the question was then came up to us rahul i am creating the 
tea leaves also. I am processing the tea leaves also and making tea also, which means technically I am doing an agricultural operations also, I am doing business operations also. Now, who should tax what? Who should tax what? Should everything be taxable by central government or should some portion go to state government? Yes or no? Yes. So, this chapter basically comes and helps you clarify as to what is that kind of income which is taxable in the hands of state and what is the kind of income which is taxable in the hands of central. What is the kind of income which is taxable in the hands of central? Yes. So, why this chapter? How this chapter will help you understand which of the incomes will be taxable under state and which of the incomes will be taxable in the hands of central when you have a complicated scenario, when you have a complicated scenario. Yes. Before we get into that part itself, we have to first understand what do you mean by agriculture? What do you mean by agriculture? In income tax, they come and say, Rahul, agriculture means any kind of operations of agriculture. What does agriculture mean? Any kind of operations you do on. Any kind of operations which you do of agriculture on Indian urban land. What land? Indian, uh, no sorry, not urban land, Indian rural land. Any kind of operations which you do on an agriculture which is done on an Indian rural land. Which means you have a rural land, on that rural land you are going to do some operations of agriculture. Like what? You can create fruits, you can create vegetables and all those things. So, you are doing a basic operations of agriculture. You are doing some basic operations of agriculture. That is called as agriculture. That is called as agriculture. Now, question which has come up is, Rahul, I am planning to create rice. I am planning to create rice. Now, if you are planning to create rice, is rice agriculture? No, because rice is going to be processed. Rice is going to be processed. What is going to be agriculture is the paddy. Yes or no? So, you have a land. On that land, you create a paddy. That is agriculture. Paddy gets converted into rice. That becomes processed product. That becomes processed products. Now, what is happening is I am planning to create paddy. I am planning to create paddy. Is paddy agriculture? Yes. Paddy is agriculture. Now, what happened is Rahul, I created paddy. I created paddy. For that paddy, what happened is I also had to incur some expenses like doing thrashing and all those things. Yes, you have to remove that uh, weeds. Uh, pesticides and all those things. You have to thrash it, you have to cut it and all those things. Yes, so those are some extra operations. Those are some extra operations. Without those operations, I will not be able to sell this paddy in the market. Without this operations, I will not be able to sell this product in the market. In that case, the operations which you did on that product, it has not been done on the land, but it is important for you to make the product saleable. It is important for you to make the product saleable. In that case, do you think that operations which you have done is also agriculture? Yes. Yes. So, second condition they are coming and saying doing operations of agriculture in Indian, Indian rural land is an agriculture, is an rural land. Second, they are coming and saying any basic operations, any what? Basic operations which you are doing on the product. Any basic operations which are done on the product to make the product saleable. to make the product saleable. I will give you an example. Let us say for example, you are in sugar cane. Okay, what have you done is you have manufactured sugar, uh, you have uh, grown sugar cane, you have grown sugar cane and you are planning to sell sugar cane off. You are planning to sell sugar cane off, but what you are doing is instead of doing sugar cane sale directly, you are actually doing all this churning. You are doing the churning and you are actually pulling out the juice from the sugar cane. You are pulling out the juice from the sugar cane. That juice from the sugar cane is what you are selling. That juice from the sugar cane is what you are selling. Now, the churning which you did for extracting the juice. The churning which you did for extracting juice. Is it agriculture or not agriculture? Is it agriculture or not agriculture? It is not agriculture. Rahul, why is it not agriculture? Understand, you could have sold sugarcane directly also. You could have sold sugarcane directly also. No one came and told you that only if you give me the juice, I will buy the sugarcane. Yes or no? Sugarcane could have been bought as it is. Which means the extractivity which you did for getting the juice out of it is not a part of agriculture. It is not a part of agriculture. That will become business income. That will become business income. Understand? Yes. So, what I am talking about is I am talking about doing basic growing activities on a land. And I am also talking about any operations which is required for doing that basic operations. Any operations required to do the basic operations. Next time coming and saying that Rahul, I have the land. I have a land which is an agricultural land, which is an agricultural land, but I do not have the skills to do agriculture. I do not have the skills to do agriculture. Do you think I will keep the land just like that? No. What will I do? I will give this land to someone else for agriculture. Yes. So, which means I am doing the rent of the land. I am doing the rent of the land. I have a land. I have given it to someone for rent. That person is going to use it for 
agriculture now in that case is it agriculture not agriculture renting of the land obtaining income from it is it agriculture income not agriculture income it is still agricultural income why raul because understand you gave this land for agricultural purpose you gave this land for agricultural purpose so which means that is also an agricultural income so the next part is income derived from income derived from the rural land what is income derived from the rural land so if you have derived any income from the rural land in the form of rent that is also agriculture that is also agriculture i'll give you an example let's say for example there is a person called a there is a person called a and there is a person called b there is a person called b a went to b and he came and said dear b i have a land i have a land but i don't have agricultural skills i don't have agricultural skills it's okay you do one thing i will give this land on rent to you you do agriculture okay in exchange what will b do b will give him what will b give him b will give him rent yes or no yes now unfortunately what happened b also does not know how to do agriculture b also does not know how to do agriculture so what happened is b went to a person called c b went to a person called c now c is a farmer c is a farmer so b went to c and he came and said dear c i have a land in my hand i have a land in my hand it's not my own land but i have the control i have the control i'm giving this land to you i'm giving this land to you you do agriculture on it and you give me in exchange rent you give me in exchange rent yes or no yes now the question which then came up is rahul a was the owner of the land a got a rent a was the owner of the land a got a rent for a it is agriculture not agriculture for a it is agriculture yes or no yes or no b had the land in a sublease format b had the land in sublease format is it his land is it his land no but b is giving this land to c for sublease yes in exchange for which b is getting rent is it still agriculture yes it is also agriculture apo rahul how to find out whether it is agriculture or not simple find out what is actually happening on the land find out what is actually happening on the land at the end of the day land is going to be used for agriculture by c in that case it is still agriculture in that case it is still agriculture so which means whether it is from a to b or b to c it doesn't matter everything will be called as agricultural income everything will be called as agricultural income clear clear yes last transfer of rural land transfer of now the question which then came up is rahul i have an agricultural land okay i have an agricultural land i am not doing agriculture i don't want someone else to also do agriculture i don't want someone else to also do agriculture but there is this one person who comes to me and he comes and says dear rahul dear rahul your land i know you are wasting your land you are not doing a single agriculture also do one thing sell this land to me sell this land to me i will do agriculture on this i will do agriculture on this so i am now planning to sell the land i am now planning to sell the land for me income will be under what head will be under capital gains yes or no it will be under capital gains now the question which then came up is rahul i am going to earn income from capital gains i am going to earn income from capital gains is that income of capital gains agriculture income not agriculture income that is also agriculture income rahul why is that also agriculture income because understand at the end of the day the land was agricultural land you gave it to someone for agricultural operation so which means the land when you bought itself you bought it for agricultural purposes which means that will also become agriculture that will also become agriculture yes or no yes so therefore income tax and simple words are coming and saying boss what are the kind of agricultural incomes first you do operations on the land itself you do operations on the land itself second they are coming and saying no no you did operations but you did some extra operations also for you to make the product saleable third you are coming and saying rahul you have not done operations yourself you have given the land to someone else to do operations that is also covered fourth i'm coming and saying you also did not do operations you did not let someone else also do operations you gave up the asset for someone else to do operations you gave up the asset for someone else to do operations that is also agriculture that is also agriculture yes or no yes so four items are considered as agriculture for you four items are considered agriculture for you any doubts no last last rahul i have created a warehouse
I have created a warehouse. Yes, what I am doing is the land which I have, on that land itself I have created one warehouse. Okay. In that warehouse what is happening is I am calling other farmers. I am calling other farmers and I am telling the other farmers, if you want to use my warehouse, you can use my warehouse, you have to pay me rent. You have to pay me rent. So the question was then come up is Rahul, now this person is going to receive rent from the warehouse which is there in the same land. Yes. Is it agriculture, not agriculture? It is also agriculture. Why Rahul is it agriculture? Because understand at the end of the day, the land is going to be agriculture land. Warehouse is also for agricultural purpose. You are giving the warehouse to someone for agricultural purpose. So therefore, it will continue to be agricultural operations. It will continue to be agricultural operations. At the end of the day, my idea is very simple. When you use the land, which is agricultural land and rural in nature, it will be called as agricultural income. Whatever you do on the land, everything is agricultural income. Whether you sell off the land itself or you give this land for rent or you put something on the land, everything is agricultural operations. Except for one scenario where you are not doing any, where you are doing extra operations beyond what is required. We are doing extra operations beyond what is required. That extra operations will be called as business income. The extra operations will be called as business income. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Now, question came up is Rahul. You are telling me that you want an what land? You want an rural agricultural land. You want an rural agricultural land. Which means then the question which came up is Rahul, what do you mean by a rural agricultural land? What do you mean by a rural agricultural land? Income tax came and said, what is a rural agricultural land? A, a land which is not a urban agricultural land. What is rural land? A land which is not a urban agricultural land. Which means now you need to define what is an urban agricultural land. Yes, income tax came and said, Rahul, what do you mean by urban agricultural land? You can decide it based on your population size. You can decide it based on your population size. Yes, what is happening is income tax is coming and saying, Rahul, assuming this is the municipality. What is it? The municipality. Assuming the middle part is the municipality. In that municipality, if you have a land, in the municipality, if you have a land, that land will be called as agricultural land if the population in this municipality is 10,000 or more. How much? 10,000 or more. In what? In that municipality. So, assuming you have a land here, assuming you have a land somewhere here, okay. Now, you want to find out whether the land which is there here, you have a land somewhere here, you want to decide whether this land is agricultural or uh, rural agriculture or urban agriculture, you will come and say, Rahul, if you have a land inside the municipality, check what is the population of the municipality. If you tell me that the population of the municipality is 10,000 or more, I will come and say land is urban land. I will come and say land is urban land, which means income is taxable, not taxable. It is taxable because it is urban land. I only want rural land. I only want rural land. I came and said, no, no, Rahul, actually the land is not in the municipality. The land is not in the municipality. The land is actually within 2 kilometers of the municipality. The land is within 2 kilometers of the municipality, which means it is in this ring. Somewhere here it is, let's say for example. It is somewhere here. Yes. Now, it is in the municipality, not in the municipality. It is not in the municipality. Income tax is saying that if it land is not in the municipality, but it is within 2 kilometers of the municipality. It is within 2 kilometers of the municipality. It will consider itself as an urban land. Again, if the population size of the municipality, including the 2 kilometers area. Of what? Of the municipality, including the 2 kilometers area, which means this whole area. which means the whole area. If this whole area has population more than 10,000, if the population has more than 10,000, yes. So, they are coming and saying, Rahul, check where the land is. If the land is within the municipality, then municipality 10,000. If the land is within 2 kilometers, the 2 kilometers of area with the municipality 10,000. If it is more than 10,000, it is urban. If it is less than 10,000, it is 
rural. I am saying no, no, Rahul, it is not within 2 kilometers also. It is not within 2 kilometers also. It is actually within 6 kilometers, Rahul. Actually, actually within 6 kilometers. 6 kilometers from where? From the municipality. From the municipality, it is within 6 kilometers. It is within 6 kilometers, which means it is falling between 3 kilometers to 6 kilometers. It is falling within 3 kilometers to 6 kilometers. Income tax comes and says that if you have a land somewhere here, if you have a land somewhere here, this land will be called as urban land. This land will be called as urban land. If the population size is more than 1 lakh, if the population size is more than 1 lakh, more than 1 lakh where? It is from the municipality till the 6 kilometers. It is from the municipality till the 6 kilometers, which means you have to take the full portion. You have to take the full portion. Yes or no? Yes. This full portion will be called as urban land. If at all the population goes more than 6 kilometers. If the population uh, if the population goes more than 1 lakh. If the population goes more than 1 lakh. I am saying no, no, Rahul. Actually, the land building is not within 6 kilometers also. The building is within 8 kilometers. The building is within 8 kilometers. If the building is within 8 kilometers, I am coming and saying that Rahul, the land is somewhere here which means it is falling within the 7th kilometer to the 8th kilometer. I am coming and saying in that case, Rahul, check whether the population is more than 10 lakhs. Check whether the population is more than 10 lakhs. If the population is more than 10 lakhs, Rahul, then it will become a urban land. If the population is less than 10 lakhs, it will become rural land. It will become rural land. Yes, yes. I am coming and saying, Rahul, my actual land is here. My actual land is here, which is outside the 8 kilometers also, which is outside the 8 kilometers also. In that case, I will come and say, forget it off, it is always rural. Forget it off, it is always rural. I do not have to bother. Yes, 8 kilometers, Kapro, I do not have to check the population itself. After 8 kilometers, I do not have to check the population itself. Land will automatically become rural land. Land will automatically become rural land. Yes or no? Yes or no? This is what the criteria are. This is what the criteria are. What are the criteria? If the land is within the municipality, then you have to check for 10,000. If the land is within 2 kilometers, you have to check for 10,000. If the land is within 6 kilometers, you have to check for 1 lakh. If the land is beyond 6 kilometers, but within 8 kilometers, you have to check for 10 lakhs. If it is anything beyond 8 kilometers, it is always rural. It is always rural. This is what the idea is. Yes or no? Yes. Now, the question which then comes is, Rahul, first of all, from where should I take the 6 kilometers? From where should I take the 6 kilometers? If my land is here, if my land is here, which is a 6 kilometer range, which is a 6 kilometer range, should I take the 6 kilometers from here, from here, from here, or is it from here? Is it from here? The reason I am asking this is because right now this may look into the 6 kilometers bracket, but what if you come and say I want to take it from here? Apripata, technically this has become more than 8 kilometers, so you can call it as rural land, yes or no, yes. So, the question which then comes is how to find out the 6 kilometers range. Income tax says boss, 6 kilometers will be taken from the nearest municipality, from the nearest municipality border. My municipality border ended here, yes or no, yes. So, I will draw a straight line, I will draw a straight line. This is how I will calculate my distance, this is how I will calculate my distance. If this distance is more than 6 kilometers, but less than 8 kilometers, then I have to check for a population of 10 lakhs. Then I have to check for a population of 10 lakhs, which means the land will be checked from the nearest distance from the municipality uh, border. Will be checked from the nearest distance of the municipality border. Yes or no? Yes. Scenario number 2, Rahul. I have a land here. I have a land here. This is my municipality. This is my municipality. From this area, this is actually showing 9 kilometers. This is showing 9 kilometers. But there is another municipality here. There is an other municipality here. From this area of municipality, it is showing only 2 kilometers. Only 2 kilometers. Question to you. Rahul, should I consider this land as rural from 9 kilometers or should I consider this land as urban from 2 kilometers? Income tax comes and says, whenever you are trying to find the distance, do not take the distance from the forest area. Take the distance from the nearest border. Take the distance from the nearest border. The nearest border here is 2 kilometers. So, you will check for the population size of 10,000. 
you'll check the population size of 10,000. If it is going more than 10,000, you will consider it as urban. Otherwise, you will consider it as rural. Otherwise, you will consider it as rural. Yes or no? Yes. Last scenario. Rahul, what happened is, I am in the border of municipality. This is the border of municipality. Okay. My land is actually here. My land is actually here. And what happened is, land is showing within 3 kilometers. Land is showing within 3 kilometers. I was very sure that the land will become an rural uh, urban land i was very sure that the land will become an urban land so what i did is i played a game i played a game i bought this whole area i bought this whole area and in this whole area what i did is i created a road i created a road you know how the road looks like the road is starting from here it goes like this 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 and then it reaches here then it reaches here actually if you walk by road if you walk by road the distance is 12 kilometers if you walk by road, the distance is 12 kilometers. I go to the assessing officer and come and say, Sir, from me to reach from my border to my land will take 12 kilometers. Therefore, this land is rural land. Therefore, this land is rural land. Is the assessor right or is the assessor wrong? Bye. I said distance. No, I said distance from the border. Distance from the border is how much? By walk, it is how much? Rural, urban. Very good. Income tax comes and says, boss, I am not bothered about what is the distance by road. I am bothered about what is the distance by air. I am bothered about what is the distance by air. Why am I bothered about air, Rahul? Because if it is air, I don't have to bother about what the road looks like. Yes, if I am standing here and I want if I am standing here and I want to go here, by road it may take like this, but by air it will be a straight line, yes or no, by air it will be a straight line. So therefore income tax comes and says to check for the distance, the distance should be from the nearest border on an aerial distance, the nearest border from an aerial distance. So you have to check the 2 kilometers on an aerial level, you have to check it on aerial level, yes or no, yes, this is what income tax comes and says, any doubts till now? Any doubts till now? No. So we have understood what happens when agriculture happens and how to determine whether the land is rural land or agricultural land, uh, rural land or urban land. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, exactly. What income tax comes and says, no, that up to 2 kilometers, it is technically considered as municipal uh, land only. Okay, so up to 2 kilometers, you will as good as assume it is municipal land, people have control over it. It's like in India, you have no 12 nautical miles very quite territorial waters. Ade Mari for municipality, up to 2 kilometers, it is considered as municipality area only. So, all put together, you can check for 10,000. Second condition. Which condition? Ma? Acha. Income tax is coming and saying that, boss, if you look at from the left side, technically, this has become a rural land. Yes, but if you look at from the right side, it has become an urban land. Why? Because you are not checking from the nearest distance. You are not checking from the nearest distance. Understand, now if I have to actually make the left side possible, if I have to make the left side possible, what I will do is, I will buy a land in Assam. I will buy a land in Assam and I will come and say, my nearest municipality is Chennai. From Chennai to Assam, obviously, it will be more than 8 kilometers and I will come and say, it is always a rural. It is always rural. Understand, it is not the criteria like that. Okay. If you are having a land in Assam, you should take the nearest municipality in Assam. You cannot come and talk about Chennai. Yes. Therefore, I am coming and saying for you to check whether it is rural or urban, do not check the land which is very far away. Check the land which is very closest. I mean, check the municipality which is the very closest. Base is that municipality. That municipality you will check for the population. That municipality you will check for the population. Yes. Okay. Can we go for? Yes. Now, the issue which happened for me, Rahul, is that I am coming and saying this is what my re, uh, uh, this is what my conditions are for agriculture. This is what my conditions are for agriculture. Now, when I started this class, when I started the batch, I also came and asked you one simple question. Rahul, do you think agriculture happens in every country, uh, every state? Do you think agriculture happens in every state or it happens only in some states? It happens only in some states. But the other states which are there, do you think they don't do agriculture at all? Or do you think they do agriculture? They will do agriculture. Yes, everyone needs some food. Everyone needs some food. So, they will also do agriculture. Now, do you have a land for doing agriculture? Do you have a land to do agriculture? No. In that case, what happens is, 
these kind of states also have a concept called as creating nurseries. What? Creating nurseries. Now, now what is this nursery, Rahul? If you notice, no, you would have seen this uh, in, uh, what do you say? In your schooling and all, you would have learned something called as greenhouse uh, and all. Yes, where you can create products, where you can create products. There is a very famous movie called Harry Potter. In that Harry Potter and all, you'll see there will be a big shed. And the shed cooler, they'll be growing plants and everything. Yes, that is called as a nursery. That is called as a nursery. Nursery is basically an area where you are trying to do agriculture. You're trying to do agriculture by not using the land, by not using the land, but by creating artificial <coughs> atmosphere, by creating artificial atmosphere. So what happened is there is a person who opened up a nursery. There's a person who opened up a nursery and in this nursery, he is growing crops. He's doing what? He's growing crops. Yes. Now what happened is this person was running a nursery. He was growing crops in that nursery. He was growing crops in that nursery and he was claiming that as an agriculture income. He was claiming that as an agriculture income. Income tax officer came to this person and came and said, dear person, you cannot claim this as agriculture income because for you to do agriculture, you should have a land. You should have a land. Are you doing this on land? No, you're doing it inside a shed. You're doing it inside a shed. So is this called as an agriculture or not is the question which came up. Is this called as an agriculture or not is the, what the question came up. What I did is as an associate, I went to my state government. I went to my state government and came and said, dear state government, income tax is coming and saying this is taxable under central law. You may lose money. You may lose money. At the end of the day, I am doing agriculture. I am doing agriculture. Just that I cannot do land agriculture. I am doing it in a nursery. At the end of the day, am I doing agriculture or not doing agriculture? I am doing agriculture. So I went to the state government and I came and said, dear state government, this is something which is wrong. This is something which is wrong. Central is asking for money. Central is asking for money. Help me out. Help me out. State went and talked to central government and came and said, no, no, sir, don't tax all this. Don't tax all this. I want my money. I want my money because I have spent so much money in creating that nursery. I have spent so much money in creating that nursery. Even though my even though my state could not do agriculture, I created the nursery so that my state can do agriculture. So I still want tax on that in the state. I still want tax on that in the state. Therefore, income tax came and said, if you do any operations on nursery, if you do any operations in nursery, it will not, it will also be considered as agriculture. It will also be considered as agriculture. So they said, considered as considered as agriculture even if not done on land what happened i am considering it as agriculture even though it is not done on land so this is only one exception given to you this is only one exception given to you. Normally, any kind of agriculture income will only be agriculture income if it is done on land. Only one exception given to you if you do it through a nursery. If you do it through a nursery. Yes or no? Yes. Next. Next. Rahul, what happened is I have a land. I have an land. I have an agriculture land also. I have an agriculture land also. It is rural also. It is rural also. The only problem is it is in Pakistan. What is it in? It is Pakistan. I have a land in Pakistan. I have a land in Pakistan. On that land in Pakistan, I am doing agriculture. I am doing agriculture and I am deriving money. And I am deriving money. Question which then came up is, Rahul, the money which is coming from the Pakistan land, the money which is coming from the Pakistan land is taxable in my hands because it is ROR. I am an ROR. My global income is taxable. My global income is taxable, which means every state is now coming and fighting. Every state is now coming and fighting. They are coming and saying, Rahul, I want tax on this. I want tax on this. Why? Because I am having agriculture from Pakistan, but I am sitting in Chennai. I am sitting in Chennai. So, Tamil Nadu government is saying, I want money. Tamil Nadu government is saying, I want money. Kerala government is coming and saying, no, no, Rahul, actually for you to do Pakistan, you actually bought seeds from Kerala. You bought seeds from Kerala. So, Kerala state is also coming and asking, give me tax. Tamil Nadu is also saying, give me tax. Now, there is a huge problem. There is a huge problem because we don't know which state will collect. Which state will collect. I told you in the past that if you have a land in some place, that state will collect it off. Yes. But right now, the land is not in India. The land is in Pakistan. So the question which then came up is who will collect taxes? Income tax stood up and came and said, forget off, no one of you can collect taxes. Forget it off, none of you can collect taxes. I will collect tax. I will collect taxes. In simple words, income tax comes and says in section 10.1. Income tax says in section 10.1 that any agriculture income, any agriculture income is exempt from income tax is exempt from income tax 
only for income from land in india very good only from a land in india in simple words income tax comes and says if the agriculture is happening in india then it is exempt from income tax but if the agriculture is happening in foreign then it is fully taxable then it is fully taxable under income tax itself which means can state collect taxes no state cannot collect taxes this is what the idea is this is what the idea is yes or no yes so this is being told under section 10 1 this is be told under section 10 1 section 10 1 comes and says any income from agriculture from a land situated in india will be exempt from income tax and state cannot collect taxes and state cannot collect taxes however if any agriculture income is coming from land outside india income tax will collect taxes state has no authority state has no authority yes or no yes or no yes this is what the provisions are let's read let's read it says section 10 1 says any agriculture income earned by an assessee during the year shall be exempt from tax shall be exempt from tax what do you mean by agriculture income rahul agriculture income means any kind of rent or revenue which is derived from an eligible land situated in india for agricultural purpose important point here is it should be situated in india important point is it should be situated in india if it is situated in foreign is it taxable or exempt it is taxable it is taxable so this is an important point it should be situated in india understand what i am telling i am telling any kind of rent or revenue which means if you are giving the land for rent then it is agriculture if you are having a warehouse in the land that is also agriculture next income derived from such eligible land by agriculture you are doing agriculture next you are doing any kind of process which is ordinarily employed in to render the agricultural produce fit to be taken to the market yes you have done some basic operations which is helping you do the product fitable to sale in the market like thrashing winnowing cleaning drying crushing all those items next next i'm saying any kind of sale of agricultural produce in the market by the cultivator in kind provided no process other than the one above is performed okay for you to sell in the market also you may incur some selling expenses you may do some marketing and all those things those things are also agriculture those things are also agriculture will not be a problem will not be a problem it should just not be any activity which is not helping you sell it not be any activity which is not helping you sell it like further processing and all will not be considered will not be considered last item i'm coming and saying any kind of income which is derived from a dwelling house or a storehouse any kind of income which is derived from a dwelling house or a storehouse or in the immediate vicinity of the eligible land used for agricultural operations so which means if you have a storehouse or a land or a warehouse in the land that operations income is also exempt from agriculture exempt in agriculture yes yes next we have agricultural colleges okay they will have a land for class purpose okay correct correct okay so you are talking about having an uh, you are talking about going to an agriculture college where they are having a land for doing agriculture correct first of all question which then comes is agricultural college is there in the municipality or is it outside municipality if you tell me it is within municipality then i'll come and say it is urban land only it is urban land only if you say me it is outside municipality then in that case it may become a rural land it may become a rural land depending on the population assuming you say it is an urban land assuming it is saying an urban land it means income is taxable yes or no yes but when we go forward when we do another chapter in that other chapter i'll come and tell you that whenever an college or a university derives any kind of income that income is fully exempt the income is fully exempt so the income may not become exempt because it is agriculture but it will become exempt because income tax is exempting it for you okay so any kind of schools colleges charitable organizations uh universities colleges everything are fully exempt from tax okay so while you may earn income from that agriculture college income will become exempt from tax income will become exempt from tax yes let's read it says any kind of uh, as per section 10 only agricultural income which is earned from a land situated in india is exempt please highlight this important part any agricultural land from a land situated outside india is fully taxable okay this is the only thing which you have to remember from this chapter land situated in india is fully exempt land situated outside india is fully taxable is fully taxable next rent received from agricultural land in kind is also exempt i don't care whether the money is coming in cash or the money is coming in kind it doesn't matter further in case of sublease rent received by both tenant and owner is also exempt provided the subtenant uses the land for 
agricultural purpose provided the subtenant uses land for agricultural purpose what do you mean by agriculture agriculture means tilling of land sowing of seeds similar operations whatever it is then income derived from saplings or seedlings which is grown in a nursery would also be deemed to be an agricultural income whether or not the basic operations is carried out on land i don't care i don't care if the land is not having the operations done if it is happening in a nursery then also it is exempt then also it is exempt what is an eligible land rahul eligible land means a land which is situated in rural areas a land which is situated in rural areas what do you mean by rural areas that is what we discussed the population size okay i will show that rural areas once again to you when we do capital gains when we do capital gains right now this is what the provisions are this is what the provisions are last item they are coming and saying what i am going to exempt for you is only agriculture what i am not going to exempt for you is dairy farming what i am not going to exempt for you is dairy or poultry farming so they are coming and saying any kind of income from breeding of livestock poultry farming fisheries fa dairy farming anything is not an agriculture income and therefore will become fully taxable and therefore will become fully taxable i am not going to exempt a single item for you i am not going to exempt a single item for you yes or no yes or no yes yes ma no it can be anywhere yeah yeah like i told you no nursery is something which you are creating in your state because you are not able to have a land for doing agricultural operation so you got a special approval and you created a nursery okay in which case nursery or area is technically become an agricultural area yes let's look at the question it says mr ankur is an owner of a land situated in kerala which is used for growing there on different types of fruits paddies vegetables and flowers which is received from yahoo movies limited uh -huh. acha ankur is the owner of the land which is situated in kerala which is using this land for growing fruits paddies vegetable and flowers has received from a person called yahoo movies limited chennai 5 lakh rupees as rent towards the use of this land for shooting a film okay so there is a person called ankur who has received money from yahoo yahoo is giving him 5 lakh rupees for shooting film in the land for shooting film in the land the amount so received was accounted by him the books as revenue revenue derived from the lands and has been claimed as an exempt tax under 101 and has been claimed as exempt tax under 101 he now wants to confirm from you whether the amount to, which has been treated by him correctly as an agriculture income or is it fully taxable yes so i have a land i have given this land to someone for rent i have given this land to someone for rent the problem is the person has used this land for movie shooting has used this land for movie shooting i received rent from that land is it taxable as agriculture income or is it taxable as any other income it is taxable as any other income when i told you about the land i told you it should be revenue derived from a land used for agricultural operations used for agricultural operations the agricultural operations part is missed out here you are doing the land for movie shooting you are doing the land for movie shooting which means the land is not deriving agricultural income the land is deriving tourist income the land is deriving tourist income the income is fully taxable the income is fully taxable yes or no yes or no let's read it says an income the income received by ankur from a filmmaker for allowing them to shoot a film in the agricultural land owned by him is not in the nature of agricultural income because it was neither received by him from the sale of agricultural produce nor obtained for carrying out any normal agricultural operations the amount so paid uh, was only for the purpose of shooting the film to claim an exemption in respect of agricultural income the conditions of 21 aa 2c have to be first complied with in the case of b nagireddy which is in madras high court the following judgment of apex court of raja benoy kumar sahas roy it was held that the income derived for allowing a shooting of film in the agriculture land should not be treated as agriculture income as it has no nexus to the land except that it was carried out on agricultural land except that it was carried out on agricultural land which means the income is fully taxable the income is fully taxable just to remind you people if you see a case law in my question bank if you see a case law in my question bank you don't have to read it you don't have to read it i told you these are not the case laws which are coming in exam ici has separately notified some significant case laws which in my book i have put it in blue box which i have put it in blue box there will no, there will not be any questions against that in the question bank okay so these are over and above that questions these are over and above that questions so you don't need to read these case laws for your exam you don't need to read these case laws for your exam this is just for your reference this is just for your reference even if a question like this comes in exam you can directly write the story analysis and conclude it of you don't need to quote the case laws you don't need to 
court the case laws to the extent the case laws will come in exam there will be a separate question there will be a separate question that question we will discuss about it that question we will discuss about it yes or no yes next examine with following reasons whether the following receipts are chargeable to tax or not yes first one they are saying rent of 60000 which is charged from tenants occupying houses constructed on the land which is situated in india and used for agricultural purpose agricultural purpose the tenants working in the nearby industrial area occupy these houses for their own residential purpose for their own residential purpose what is happening i have a land the land is being used for agricultural operations but the land is also given to someone for renting for renting the other person who is renting this land is actually not doing agriculture on the land he is working in an industrial sector he is working in an industrial sector he is using this land for living alone he is using this land for living alone i am deriving rent from this land i am deriving rent from this land is this income taxable not taxable is it income taxable not taxable taxable why rahul because again the person who is uh, paying the rent to you is not uh, doing agriculture the person is doing industrial operation therefore it is taxable yes as per section 101 agriculture income is exempt from tax the meaning and scope of agriculture income is defined under 21a according to the explanation 2 of 21a any income derived from any building for the use of the such building for any purpose other than for agriculture shall not be treated as agricultural income therefore the rent of 60000 which is received from letting out of house constructed on an agricultural land shall not be treated as an agricultural income and therefore will be fully taxable and therefore will be fully taxable yes or no yes or no next income of 75000 which is derived from anand nursery from the sale of seedlings which is grown without carrying out the basic operations on land okay i am an anand nursery that anand nursery is growing some seedlings and saplings that operations have not been done on the land but i have done 75000 worth of income ah, agriculture not agriculture it is agriculture if it is agriculture is it taxable not taxable very good it is not taxable it is not taxable income tax explicitly clarifies that any kind of income derived from seedlings or saplings which is grown on a nursery will be treated as an agricultural income even if it is not carried out on land even if it is not carried out on land yes yes awesome now that we have understood what is an agriculture income now that we have understood what is an agriculture income my job is to now come and tell you why are we doing it why are we doing it the reason is very simple like i told you what is happening is when you try to do agriculture income when you try to do agriculture income there could be a possibility that you may end up not selling it off in the market but you may end up doing further processing you may end up doing further processing example could be a scenario where you are a person who's having sugar cane you are a person having sugar yes now you could have sold the sugar cane in the market you could have show, oh, sold the sugar cane in the market but you have a factory you have a factory so what you did is you took the sugar cane you gave it off to your factory you gave it off to your factory factory made this sugar cane into sugar factory made the sugar cane into sugar and this sugar was what was sold this sugar was what was sold now if you notice i have sugar cane converted into sugar sold off in the market at the end of the day what has been sold an agricultural produce is sold or the final product is sold the final product is sold but is there any agriculture operations in this yes which means now the problem which came is i don't know how much of this income is agriculture how much of this income is business how much of this income is agriculture how much of this income is business the reason i don't know is because i have to tax something i cannot tax the full number i cannot tax the full number because a part of the number is sugar cane a part of the number is sugar cane in that case income tax came and said we call this income as composite income what income composite income we call this income as composite income where you have earned a combined income you have earned a combined income in which one part of the income is agriculture the other part of the income is business the other part of the income is business now the problem is then came is rahul i don't know what to do rahul i don't know what to do income tax is coming and saying first of all list out what are your incomes list out what are your incomes what have you sold what have you sold you have sold sugar cane now sugar cane has happened from business or from agriculture sorry uh, you have sold sugar sugar has happened from business or agriculture it has happened from business so i'm going to put it on business side okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create two columns i'm going to create two columns left column will be called as agriculture right column will be called as business yes now first item which you did is you sold off which means you under revenue you under revenue revenue came from business or agriculture 
it came from business. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a column in the middle and I'm going to say revenue from sugar. Revenue from sugar. Let's say for example, 1 lakh. Let's say for example, 1 lakh. Now, do I pay tax on revenue or do I pay tax on income? I pay tax on income. Income means revenue minus. Revenue minus allowable expense. Allowable expense, yes. So then what I'm coming and asking you is tell me what are the expenses which you incurred. Tell me what are the expenses which you incurred. You said, sir, Rahul, I incurred the first expense of growing sugarcane. I incurred the first expense of growing sugarcane. A growing sugarcane expense is a part of agri business or is a part of uh, uh, factory business? It's a part of agri business. So which means I incurred some expense of growing sugarcane. Yes, I incurred some expense of growing sugarcane. Let's say for example, 20,000. Let's say for example, 20,000. Then I'm coming and saying, Rahul, I incurred expense for making the sugarcane into sugar. Making the sugarcane into sugar. It is called as further processing cost. Further processing cost. Uh, which was incurred in agri business or business business? Was it incurred in the agricultural part or business part? It was incurred in the business part. So I'm going to put here minus FPC. What is FPC? Further processing cost. So I incurred, let's say 10,000 rupees. I incurred 10,000 rupees. Then I also incurred some marketing expenses, Rahul. I incurred some marketing expenses. Now, you did marketing for sugar cane or sugar? Sugar. So, marketing expenses was incurred in agri business or business business? Business business. So, I am going to put here marketing business, marketing expense, marketing expense. Let's say another 2,000. Let's say another 2,000. Yes, yes, yes. These are all the expenses which you incurred. These are all the expenses which you incurred. Now, the problem which happened is I have to split my income into agriculture income and business income. Yes or no? Yes. Now, if you notice, on the right side, you know the revenue, you know the expense. On the left side, you know your expense, but you don't know your revenue. You don't know your revenue. Income tax is saying do one thing. Do one thing. Assume your agri business is separate. Assuming your business business is separate. Assume your agri business is separate. Assuming your business business is separate. When agri business gave the sugar cane to business, when the agri business gave sugar cane to business, technically it gave it for free. Technically it gave it for free. Assuming they were different businesses. Assuming they were different businesses. Would I have given it for free? No, I would have charged some money. I would have charged some money. What money will I charge Rahul? I would have charged the normal price which the sugar cane will fetch. Yes or no? Had I sold this market in the, uh, had I sold the sugar cane in the market, I would have fetched this some number. I would have fetched some number. That is the price at which I would have sold it to him. Yes or no? Yes. So I am coming and saying, do one thing Rahul. Assume that you have sold this in the open market. Assume that you have sold this in the open market. What have you sold in the open market? Sugar cane. So I am assuming that I am selling this sugar cane in the open market. I went to the market. Market is coming and saying that if you want to sell sugar cane to me today, I will. Uh, you can earn thirty thousand rupees. You can earn thirty thousand rupees, which means that will now become my sale value. That will become my sale value. That will become my sale value. Now, do you have the sale value? Yes. Do you have a cost? Yes. Can you find out your agriculture income? Yes. What is your agriculture income? It is 10,000. Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, what did I tell you? I told you do one thing. Go and sell this sugar cane in the open market. Go and sell the sugar cane in the open market. So, the agri business has sold it off in the market. Now, the sugar business needs the sugar cane. So, what will sugar cane business do? Sugar cane business will buy it from the market. Yes, so I will give it to the market, sugar cane will go from there, sugar business will go from there and buy it from the market. When it is buying from the market, he will pay a price of 30 or 20. He will pay a price of 30,000 because I have sold it for 30,000 in the market, he will go and buy it in the market for 30,000. Yes or no? Now that 30,000 has become his raw material cost. Yes, so I will also include that as minus raw material cost, minus raw material cost. What is the price? 30,000. The price is 30,000. Now tell, now look and tell me, do you have all incomes? Yes. Do you have all expenses? Yes. How much is my business income? 58,000. Yes or no? Yes. Now do I have the split of income? Do I have the split of income? Yes. If you notice now what has happened, 1 lakh was my revenue. 
Take only the red items. Take only the red items. One lakh was my revenue. FPC is ten thousand. Mar uh, marketing cost is two thousand. Growing sugar is twenty thousand. Ah, uh, one lakh minus ten thousand is ninety. Minus two is eighty-eight. Minus twenty is seventy-eight. So my overall profit in the business was seventy-eight thousand. That seven sixty-eight or seventy-eight. Ah, uh, sixty-eight thousand. Yes, my overall profit was sixty-eight thousand in the red. In the red, which means my overall business did sixty-eight thousand. I have split that sixty-eight thousand into ten thousand of agriculture and fifty-eight thousand of business. This ten thousand will be taxable or exempt? Exempt. Ah, uh, fifty thousand will be. Fifty-eight thousand will become taxable. Fifty-eight thousand will become taxable. In simple words, in simple words, income tax is coming and saying when you have both the operations happening, when you have both the operations happening, one is agricultural operations, one is business operations. Do one thing: sell your agricultural produce in the market and ask your business team to buy it from the market. Sell your agricultural produce in the market and ask your business team to buy it in the market. If you plan to sell it in the market, if you plan to sell it in the market, you will get the FMB of the product. Yes or no? You will get the FMB of the product. What is FMB, Rahul? Fair market value. The business will buy it at what price? Business will also buy it at FMB. Business will also buy it at FMB. In simple words, I am coming and saying: Assume that you have sold it off in the market, and the business has bought it from the market. Assume you have sold it off in the market, and business has bought it from the market. If you have sold it in the market, that will become your sale value for agricultural business, and for business, uh, for your uh, processing business, it will become your cost. It will become your cost. This is how you have to split. This is how you have to split. Yes or no? This is what is the idea? Any doubts? Any doubts? Check this out. Check this out. Yes. See the question. Mm -hmm. See the question. It says, Mr. Amar is growing sugar cane. Mr. Amar is growing sugar cane and is using the same for the purpose of manufacturing sugar in his factory. Now there is a person who is growing sugar cane and is also using the sugar cane for manufacturing sugar in the factory. Which means this person is doing agricultural operations also. Processing operations also. Processing operations also. Forty percent of the sugar cane is sold for twelve lakhs. Forty percent of the sugar cane is sold for twelve lakhs, which means this person is not just giving the whole sugar cane to the factory. He is also selling this to the market. He is also selling to the market. So which means he made hundred kgs. He made hundred kgs. Forty kgs he gave it off in the market for twelve lakhs. Balance sixty kgs what he did? He gave it to factory. He gave it to factory. So they are coming and saying. Forty percent of the sugar cane was sold for twelve lakhs, and the cost of cultivation of these sugar canes were six lakhs. The cost of cultivation for these sugar canes were six lakhs. The cost of cultivation of the balance sugar cane is given as fifteen lakhs. The balance is given as fifteen lakhs, and the market value of these is given as twenty-five lakhs. Which means, had I sold the sixty percent in the market, I would have got, I would have got twenty-five. I would have got twenty-five. Yes or no? Yes. They are saying after incurring a 1.5 lakhs in the manufacturing process of the balance sugar cane, balance na 60 percent or 40 percent a 60 percent. The sugar was sold for 30 lakhs. The sugar was sold for 30 lakhs. You are required to compute Mr. Amar's business income and agricultural income. Yes. Let's do one thing. Let's first put out the facts. Let's first put out the facts, and then we will see what we can do. Then we will see what we can do. Yes, we are in the chapter called as agricultural income. We are in the chapter called as agricultural income. We are doing question number three. Doing question number three. Yes, question is coming and saying. Let's put out the facts. I told you, whenever you want to do a bus, whenever you want to do the answer easily, you can prepare a split table. You can prepare a split table. Split table is called as agriculture and business you can prepare a split table split table is called as agricultural and, and business yes or no yes rahul in my scenario agriculture is what sugar cane in my scenario agriculture is sugar cane business is sugar 
business is sugar yes or no yes looking at the question the question is coming and saying that rahul ammar is growing sugar cane and using the same for the purpose of manufacturing sugar in the factory 40% of the sugar cane is directly sold for 12 lakhs 40% of the sugar is directly sold for 12 lakhs if you are going to sell your sugar directly for 12 lakhs is there any business operations happening no it is directly pure sale it is directly pure sale so what i'll do i'll first put uh, direct sale i'll first put direct sale how much is my direct sale 40% how much is my direct sale 40% yes or no yes in my direct sale what is happening i know my revenue i know my revenue what is my revenue rahul check what is my revenue my revenue is 12 lakhs my revenue is 12 lakhs minus minus they are saying the revenue is 12 lakhs and the cost of cultivation for these products was 6 lakhs so therefore my cost is 6 lakhs yes or no my cost is 6 lakhs Raul, my revenue is 12 lakhs my cost is 6 lakhs this difference will be called as what is the difference this is called as agricultural income this is called as agricultural income. Why is it called as agricultural income, Rahul? Because it is direct sale. Because it is a direct sale. Yes or no? Yes or no? Next is my further process. How much is the further process? 60%. My further process is 60%. Yes. Now look and tell me what facts do you have? Look and tell me what facts do you have? They are saying that the cost of cultivation of the balanced sugar cane is 15 lakhs. Do you have this fact? Yes. So therefore, my cost I know. My cost I know. What is my cost? 15 lakhs. I know my cost is 15 lakhs. Then they are coming and saying the market value of the same is 25 lakhs. A market value right now. Have you earned it, not earned it? Is it actual or notional? Is it actual or notional? It is notional. It is notional. Therefore, hold. Therefore, hold. Come to the right side. It is saying after incurring 1.5 lakhs in the manufacturing process. 1.5 lakhs in the manufacturing process. Left side or right side? Left side or right side? Right side. So, what will you say? On the right side, you will come and say minus further processing charge. Minus further processing charge. How much is my further processing charge, people? 1.5 lakhs. Yes. They are saying after incurring 1.5 lakhs as further processing charge, the sugar cane, the sugar was sold for 30 lakhs. The sugar was sold for 30 lakhs. Actual or notional? Actual. So this will come on left side, right side. It will come on the right side. What is my right side revenue? 30 lakhs. My right side revenue is 30 lakhs. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Now the question is saying that's all. Compute your agriculture income and business income. Now I am not bothered about my direct sale because it has happened. Because it has happened. I am not I am not bothered about my sugar cane sale to sugar. Sugar cane sale to sugar. I told you in income tax what will you do? You will sell the sugar cane and you will buy the sugar cane. You will sell the sugar cane from agricultural business and buy the sugar cane from factory. Buy the sugar cane from factory. Now I am planning to sell the sugar cane. I am planning to sell the sugar cane. I will sell it at what value? I will sell it at market value. Question has given you the market value, not given the market value. Has given the market value. What is the market value given? 30 lakhs. Uh, sorry, 25 lakhs. Market value is given as 25 lakhs. So I will say my revenue, which is my FMV, will become 25 lakhs. Will become 25 lakhs. Therefore, my agricultural profit is now 10 lakhs. My agricultural profit is now 10 lakhs. Yes or no? Yes. Now, I told I will sell this off in the market. I told I will sell this off in the market and the factory will buy it from the market. So, if the factory is going to buy it from the market, for factory this is going to be called as raw material cost. Yes or no? Now, what is the raw material cost for the factory? Factory will buy it at what price? It will buy it at the same price which I sold. Yes, because I sold it in the market, he went and bought it from the factory. So, if I sold it in the market for 25, he will buy it in the factory for 25. So, he will also buy it for 25. Yes or no? Yes or no? Which means, what is my business income now? 3,50,000. Yes or no? 
yes which means rahul overall my agriculture income is Ten lakhs plus six lakhs, which means sixteen lakhs. Ten lakhs plus six lakhs, sixteen lakhs, and my business income is three lakh fifty thousand. My business income is three lakh fifty thousand. My business income is three lakh fifty thousand. Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, how to verify this in exam if it is right or not? In simple words, ignore all the notional items. Ignore all the notional items and find out what my actual profit is. Find out what my actual profit is in the top items. In the top items, tell me which one actual happened. Which one of these items actually happened? Did revenue of twelve lakhs actually come? Not come. It came actually. Did cost of six lakhs actually got incurred? Not got incurred. Actually got incurred. Did revenue of thirty lakhs actually come? Not come. It actually came. FPC actually happened? Not happened. Actually happened. Cost of fifteen lakhs actually happened, not happened, actually happened, and the revenue of FMB and the RM cost of twenty five lakhs both actually happened and notionally happened, notionally happened. So ignore those, ignore those. Find out the numbers. It will become thirty plus twenty forty two, thirty plus twenty forty two minus six will become thirty six minus one lakh fifty will become thirty four lakh fifty thousand, thirty four lakh fifty thousand, and minus fifteen will become. Nineteen lakh fifty thousand. Kill a correct amount, cha? Yes. Kill or the total is also nineteen lakh fifty thousand. Which means whatever is your business profit, I have split the whole business profit into agriculture and business. Agriculture and business. Nineteen lakh fifty thousand correct amount, cha? Answer is right. If nineteen lakh correct amount, cha? Answer is right. Which means whatever is the overall profit of the business should be split to equal properly into agriculture and business. Agriculture and business. If the numbers are tallying, that means the answer is right. Numbers are telling the answer is right. Yes or no? Yes. This is what your question number three is. Which one, ma? In the question, note is no. Assume you are assume you are running the factory. Okay. If you are running the factory, you have decided that you want to give your sugar cane to your own factory. Yes. Now, when you are going to give your own sugar cane to your own factory, do you think you are actually selling it or you are just transferring it? You are just transferring it, so which means technically, will there be a sale in that? Ah, so this which means the twenty-five lakhs which you see here, is it an actual or a notional? That is what, ma'am. Only for income tax purpose, because I am trying to split how much is my agriculture and how much is my business. Okay, if I don't take this number, then I don't know how much is my agriculture and how much is my business. I may end up taxing everything as agriculture, or I may end, uh, sorry, I may end up taxing everything as business, or I may end up exempting everything as agriculture. So I am coming and trying to make a split around both. Okay, by doing for doing the split, what I am saying is, in simple words, what you do is you forget that there is a factory, you forget that there is a business. The land will go and the, the agricultural team will go and directly sell it off in the market, and the factory team will go and buy it from the same market. Yes. So if the land, if the agriculture team is going to sell it in the market, they will sell it for twenty-five. If the factory team is going to buy it from the market, they'll buy it for twenty-five. This would help you split your income into agriculture and business. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Can we go forward? Yes. What we discussed right now is what is there in note number two. what we discussed right now is what is there in note number 2 yes ignoring note number 2 i am going top i am going top basically what happened is income tax came and said yes rahul i understand yes rahul i understand there are some operations which are happening there are some operations which are happening you are trying to do a uh, operations of an agriculture give it to your factory and factory is making the ultimate sale factory is making the ultimate sale there is a possibility that you will be able to split into agriculture and business there is a possibility that you will be able to split into agriculture and business so i am letting you do it i am letting you do it but what happened is rahul there are certain products there are certain products these products unfortunately you will not be able to sell directly in the market these products you may unfortunately not be able to directly sell in the market people may not be very interested to buy it people may not be very interested to buy it in that case will you be able to find out the fair market value no if you will not be able to find out the fair market value do you think you will be able to split it off No, you will not be able to split it off. In which case, income tax stood up. Income tax stood up and came and said, Rahul, there are three products. There are three products where I see this problem predominantly coming. 
there are three products which I see this problem predominantly coming. People may not be able to split into agriculture and business. People may not be able to split into agriculture and business. Let me not disturb them. Let me not disturb them. I don't want them to find out the FMV. I will tell you how to split. I will tell you how to split. So income tax notionally found out a split. Income tax notionally found out a split. Where they came and said forget all this 25 lakhs nonsense and all which you did. Okay. Find out the overall profit of the business. Find out the overall profit of the business. In that overall profit of the business, I will tell you a percentage. That percentage will become agriculture. Balance percentage will become business. Balance percentage will become business. What is I income tax notified? Income tax says that if you are planning to manufacture rubber, if you are planning to manufacture rubber, hey, will you manufacture for manufacturing rubber, you need to grow something. You need to grow something. What is that growing something? That growing something is called as latex. What is it called as? Latex. So, what you have done is you have grown latex and you have given it to your rubber factory. You have given it to your rubber factory. Rubber factory has made the rubber and sold it off. Rubber factory has made a, uh, sorry, rubber factory has made the rubber and sold it off. Now, latex is normally saleable in the market or not? It is not normally saleable. It is not normally saleable. So, income tax came and said, no problem, boss. You do one thing, you find out the overall profit of the business. You find out the overall profit of the business. In that overall profit, 65% will become agriculture. What will happen? 65% will become agriculture, 35% will become PGBP. 65% will become agriculture, 35% will become PGBP, which means take the overall profit, do revenue minus cost, assuming the number comes as 100, assuming the number comes as 100, income tax says 65, it will become exempt, 35 will become taxable. Is there a basis, Rahul? There is no basis. There is no basis, this is the numbers, this is the numbers. What for? Rubber. What is it for? Rubber. Then they are coming and saying, no Rahul, you are not in rubber, you are in coffee. You are in coffee. Income tax comes and says, when it comes to coffee, I have a two split. I have a two split. Tell me what are you doing with the coffee seeds. Tell me what are you doing with the coffee seeds. If you are going to grow and cure the coffee seeds, if you are going to grow and cure the coffee seeds, there is major agricultural operations happening and therefore it is 75 for agriculture and 25 for PGBP. How much is it? 75 for agriculture, 25 for PGBP. No, Rahul, I am actually growing it, I am curing it, I am also roasting it and I am also grounding it. I am growing it, curing it, roasting it and grounding it. Now tell me, from the earlier one, from the earlier one, have you done more business operations or have you done more agricultural operations? You have done more business operations. Roasting and grounding will happen in the business. So therefore, agriculture has come down or agriculture has increased? Agriculture has come down. Therefore, income tax came and said, boss, the numbers are 60 and 40. The numbers are 60 and 40. Rahul, how do you remember this in exam? Simple. If you see two words, it is 25 and 75. If you see two words, it is 25 and 75. If you see four words, it is 40 and 60. If you see four words, it is 40 and 60. Yes. You don't have to remember the names and all. Grow, cure, roasting and all is not important. You see two words, it is 25 and 75. If you see four words, it is 40 and 60. That's all. Okay. Last Rahul, I am in the manufacturing of tea. I am in the manufacturing of tea. They said, Rahul, it is 40 and 60. It is 40 and 60. This is what income tax says. This is what income tax says. Yes. Rahul, do I have to remember the percentage for exam? Yes. You will have to remember the percentage for exam. You will not be given an option. You will not be given an option. For these three things, you have to mandatory remember the Percentages. You have to mandatory remember the percentages. What are the percentages, Rahul? If you are doing rubber, it is 35, 65. If you are doing coffee, two words, 25, 75, four words, 40, 60. Rahul, you are doing tea, 40, 60. Rahul, what is 40, what is 60? The higher will always be agriculture. The higher will always be agriculture, which means 40 years business, 60 years agriculture. Yes, I am coming and saying the major operations will be agriculture, so major should be exempt. Major should be exempt. So, 35, 65, which is agriculture? 65 is agriculture. 65 is agriculture. Yes or no? Yes. Look at the example. Look at the example. I am saying Mr. Neelish, Mr. Neelish is in the process of manufacturing latex from rubber plants, which is grown in India which is grown in India. These are then sold in the market for 36 lakhs. These are then sold in the market for 36 lakhs. The cost of growing rubber plants are given to you as 16 lakhs and that of manufacturing latex is given as 12 lakhs. Manufacturing latex is given as 12 lakhs. So what is happening is I am having a rubber plant. 
I am having a rubber plant. This rubber plant, I am incurring a cost of 16 lakhs. I am incurring a cost of 16 lakhs. Then I am giving this rubber plant to my latex industry. To my latex industry. In that latex industry, they are incurring 12 lakhs. They are incurring 12 lakhs. After everything gets over, they are selling it for 36. After everything is over, they are selling it for 36. At any point of time, do you see the market value? Have they given you what is the market value? No. They have not even given you what is the market value. Which means, do you know at what price the rubber would have normally been sold? No. What will you do in this case? You will find out the overall profit of the business. Find out the overall profit of the business. My sale is 36 lakhs. My cost is 12 lakhs plus 16 lakhs. Therefore, 28 lakhs. Which means my profit is 8 lakhs. My profit is 8 lakhs. Income tax comes and says that when you are into rubber industry, when you are into rubber industry, it is very good. It is 35 and 65. Rahul, how much is 35? Now, what is 35? Very good. Business is 35. 65 is agriculture. Get me the breakup. How much? 2.8 lakhs. 5.2 lakhs. Rahul, 2.8 lakhs. Taxable exempt. 2.8 lakhs will become taxable. 5.2 lakhs will become very good. 5.2 will become exempt. Clear? Yes. This is what the question says. This is what the question says. Any doubts? Can we go forward? Yes. Next. Mr. Akash is a resident Indian. Is earning an income of 22 lakhs from the sale of rubber manufactured from latex obtained from rubber plants grown by him. What has he done? He has earned an income of 22 lakhs from the sale of rubber. He has earned 22 lakhs from the sale of rubber and 30 lakhs from the sale of rubber manufactured from the latex obtained from rubber plants grown by him. Yes. So, 22 lakhs he earned from sale of rubber manufactured from latex obtained from rubber plants grown by him in India and 30 lakhs from the sale of rubber manufactured from latex and grown by him in Malaysia. Yes. So, he has two rubber plants. He has two rubber plants. One plant is in India, one plant is in Malaysia. The Indian plant has given him 22 lakhs. The Malaysia plant has given him 30 lakhs. What is the income which is going to be taxable as business income assuming he has no other business? Assuming he has no other business. Now, first of all, tell me he has two operations. One operation is Malaysia. One operation is India. A Malaysia operation taxable or exempt? Of? Fully taxable. Yes or no? Because I said agriculture income only from India is exempt. So, therefore, Malaysia operations I will fully tax it off. What is our income from Malaysia operations? 30 lakhs. Can I exempt something off? Can I exempt something off? Which means everything is fully taxable. Therefore, taxable amount will become 30 lakhs. Yes. Coming to the Indian operations, you earned you earned 22 lakhs. You earned 22 lakhs. This is what? This is rubber. In rubber, it is 35, 65. Which is 35? Taxable 35 or exempt is 35? Uh, taxable is 35. So, into 35 percent. How much? 7.7 .7 lakhs. So, therefore, my total business income is 37.7 lakhs. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, simple straightforward answers. Can we go forward? Yes, next. Mr. Ram is a resident Indian, earning an income of 15 lakhs from the sale of coffee grown and cured in India. Coffee grown and in India. Look at it once again. Mr. Ram is a resident in India earning an income of 15 lakhs from coffee grown and cured in India. Do you see two words or do you see four words? You see two words or four words? Where is the four words? I see grown and cured only. Where is the other two words? Two words. Which means it is, if it is two words, it is for two words, it is, it is, it is, it is 25 and 75. If it is four words, it is very good, 40 and 60, yes. Now, what has happened is, Mr. Ram has earned 15 lakhs from sale of coffee grown and cured in India, which means out of that 15 lakhs, how much will be taxable for me? 25% will become taxable for me, which means 1 by 4, uh, 3 point. 75 lakhs will become taxable for me. Clear till here? Yes. His friend is Mr. Sham, a resident Indian, earning an income of 25 lakhs from sale of coffee grown, cured, roasted and grounded. Two words, four words. Four words. How much has this person earned? 25 lakhs. How much is taxable for him? 40% is taxable. Number will become 
10 lakhs. Rahul, can I add 10 lakhs and 3.75 lakhs? Can I add 10 lakhs and 3.75 lakhs? No, why? Different people, different people, different taxes, different people, different taxes. So you will not tax, uh, you will not add both of the numbers. Yes, the question is saying what would be the business income chargeable to tax in the hands of Ram? In the hands of Ram, it will be 3.75 lakhs. In the hands of Sham, it will be 10 lakhs. In the hands of Shams, it will be 10 lakhs. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Next. Mr. Vivita is a resident and an ordinary resident in India and is deriving the following incomes and is deriving the following incomes from the operations which she has, from the operations which she has. You are requested to compute the business income and agriculture income of Vivita. You are requested to compute the business income and agriculture income in Vivita. Yes. So, what we are going to do is we are going to prepare a table. We are going to prepare a table. What question is this? Question number 7. We are looking at question number 7. This is computation of what? Computation of what is the question asking you to do? They wanted to find the business income and agriculture income. So, computation of income. Of, yaru, of Vivita. For assessment year 2024-25. What do you need, Rahul? You need business income, you need agriculture income. So, you need two columns. Yes, now these two columns will also have a percentage. So, you need two more columns. So, four columns along with the particulars. So, how many columns do you need? You need particulars, then one column called as business income, one column called as agriculture income, one column called as agriculture income. In that business income, you will have to put two things. One will be the percentage, one will be the amount. Here also it will be percentage and amount. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, prepare your columns. Shall we? Shall we? Yes. Okay. Look at the questions and tell me what is the percentages. Okay. Question is saying income from sale of centrifuge latex processed from rubber plants grown in Darjeeling. Grown in Darjeeling. You have some rubber plants. You have some rubber plants. How much is the income for you? 3 lakhs. Uh, how will you split? How will you split? You will split it in 35 and 65. Which is 35 all? Business is 35 or agree is 35? Business is 35. So, therefore, 35 percent for business, 65 percent for agree. 35 percent for business and 65 percent for agree. A number. What is 1 lakh 5? Okay. Business is 1 lakh 5000, which means agriculture will become 1 lakh 95000. Agree will become 1 lakh 95. Yes. Next. Income from sale of coffee grown and cured in Yerkat, Tamil Nadu. Two words, four words. Two words. Therefore, 25 and 75. 25 is business, 75 is agri. Number is 1 lakh. So, therefore, directly 25,000 and 75,000. Purida. Next. Income from sale of coffee grown, cured, roasted and grounded. Two words, four words. Four words. Uh, it will become split of 40 and 60. What is the number? 2 lakh 50. 2 lakh 50 into 40 will give you 1 lakh. Yes or no? 2 lakh 50 into 40 will give you 1 lakh. Balance will become 1 lakh 50,000. Balance will become 1 lakh 50,000. Then, sale consideration was received at Chennai. Achha, sorry, okay. Hey, one second. Once again, once again, once again. It says income from coffee sale grown, cured, roasted, and grounded in Colombo. Sale consideration was received in Chennai. First of all, can you split this 40 and 60 Raul? Can you split this 40 and 60 Raul? No. Why Raul? Because Colombo is in Sri Lanka. Colombo is in Sri Lanka, which means full agriculture income is taxable in India. Whole of the agriculture income is taxable in India, which means 60 and 40 cannot be done. 
60 and 40 cannot be done the whole of the income will become taxable in india the whole of the income will become taxable in india yes or no yes or no next next they are saying income from sale of tea grown and manufactured in shimla grown and manufactured in shimla ah, percentages 40 and 60 40 and 60 4 lakh into 40 will give you 1 lakh 60000 60 will give you 2 lakh 40000 Uh, question number E. Income from saplings and seedlings grown in a nursery at Cochin. Basic operations were not carried out by her on land, 80,000. Business uh, agriculture uh, both. Uh. It is purely agriculture. It is purely agriculture. So, business will become 0. Agriculture will become 100. Number is 80,000. Number is 80,000. Is there anything else in the question? No, you can total it off. Five lakh forty for business. Five lakh forty for business. Five lakh ninety thousand for agriculture. 5 lakh 40 for business and 5 lakh 90 for agriculture. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, this is a full fledged question for you to understand your percentages properly. Careful about this important question from exam. Okay. Yes. Yes. Any doubts? Can we go for it? Go for it. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Now, in this chapter, what we have completed is we have completed the definition of agriculture income. We have completed how to find out an agriculture income. We have also split our income into business and agriculture, into business and agriculture. Now, the last thing which is pending, which may not be relevant from exam perspective for you, which may not be relevant from exam perspective for you, now that you have come to finals, but since it was there in inter also, let me just clarify to you. We have this concept called as partial integration. We have this concept called as partial integration. What do you mean by partial integration, Rahul? Income tax is basically coming and saying that, Rahul, if you have an agriculture income, if you have an agriculture income, technically your income is not exempt. Technically, your income is not exempt. Technically, your income is partially integrated. Technically, your income is partially integrated. What do you mean by this, Rahul? Basically, understand. Today, my business income is 4 lakhs. My business income is 4 lakhs. My agriculture income is 6 lakhs. How much is my agriculture income? 6 lakhs. My total income is 10 lakhs. Now, when my total income is 10 lakhs, when my total income is 10 lakhs, Ideally speaking, 10 lakhs is my income. So, income tax wanted tax on 10 lakhs. Income tax wanted tax on 10 lakhs. But the problem is state came and said, I want tax on 6 lakhs. State came and said, I want tax on 6 lakhs. So, income tax said, okay, you keep it. Okay, you keep it. But understand, at the end of the day, 10 lakhs was your income. So, you should have paid tax on 10 lakhs. Should have paid tax on 10 lakhs. Now, the problem what has happened no, is that the moment you said agriculture income is exempt, the moment you said agriculture income is exempt, business income became 4 lakhs. So, therefore, total income also became 4 lakhs. Yes or no? Now, when your total income is 4 lakhs, your tax will become 0. Why Rahul tax will become 0? Because you will get rebate. Yes or no? But ideally speaking, did the person earn more money? Is the person poor? No, the person is not poor. The person is actually earning 10 lakhs. The person is actually earning 10 lakhs. But because of the agriculture income becoming exempt from tax, this person is ending up paying zero tax on normal income also. This person is ending up paying zero tax on normal income also, which is why income tax came and said, boss, I am not happy with this concept of exemption. I am not happy with this concept of exemption. I want something else. I want something else. I call it as partial integration. What do I call it as? I call this as partial integration. I call this as partial integration. Now, what does a partial integration mean is that income tax is coming and telling do one thing for me, do one thing for me. Tell me what your income slab is. Tell me what your income slab is. It starts from 0. So, no, starts from 0. I told you my income is how much? My income is 10 lakhs. 
the income is 10 lakhs so what will happen at every stage you will have a tax rate at every stage you will have a tax rate first tax rate stage will be at first tax rate stage will be at 2 lakh 50000 yes or no till here tax is zero yes this income tax is saying put under other income put your other income other income means no other than agriculture income other than agriculture income then after 2 lakhs after 2.5 lakhs first priority give to agriculture income first priority give to agriculture income how much is my agriculture income 6 lakhs so therefore 2.5 lakhs to 6 lakhs will become 8.5 yes so which means the next slab it will stop at 5 lakhs the next slab it will stop at 5 lakhs in this slab the rate is 5 percent and this is i want to be considered as agri income this is what i want to consider as agri income balance how much is agri income left ma you had 6 lakhs 2.5 you utilize balance is balance is 3.5 so what will happen up to 8.5 lakhs up to 8.5 lakhs rate of tax will be 20 percent this also i will consider agri income this also i will consider agri income yes or no yes how much is the balance left you have exhausted your agri in your other income you have exhausted 2.5 your total was 4 which means left off is 1.5 yes or no left off is 1.5 this 1.5 will also be taxable for 20 percent for this also they said put it as other income for this they said put it as other income other income in simple words what they are coming and saying is rahul when you have an income which has agriculture also when you have an income which has agriculture also agriculture income will be given first priority from your taxable slab will be given first priority from your taxable slab Mitcha income you can split between non taxable and the future taxable. Why am I doing this, Rahul? It is because understand if I had taken the agriculture income as zero, if I taken agriculture income as zero, my overall income would have been 4 lakhs. Yes, which means 2.5 would have gone to my slab, 2.5 would have gone to my slab. In no 1.5 would have gone to 5 percent, in no 1.5 would have gone to 5 percent. There I would have paid tax of 5 percent on that 1.5. Now I am ending up paying tax of 20 percent on. 1.5 why am i paying more than that because in the middle i gave priority to agricultural income in the middle i gave priority to agricultural income in which means in simple words in simple words what they are coming and saying is rahul compute the tax for the whole 10 lakhs compute the tax for the whole 10 lakhs and remove the tax which is there on agriculture income remove the tax which is there on agriculture income the tax on agriculture income will be from 2.5 to 8.5 2.5 to 8.5 which means for 2.5 lakhs it will be 5 percent for 3.5 3 lakhs it will be 20 percent remove that part of remove that part of this is called as partial integration where I will ensure that the other income which you have the other income which you have moves to a higher slab moves to a higher slab so that you end up paying more tax to the government so that you end up paying more tax to the government how do you do this Rahul I told step number one find the tax for the whole income Find the tax for whole income. In my example, it is it is 10 lakhs. In my example, it is 10 lakhs. So what is 10 lakhs Rahul? 4 lakhs of business income, 6 lakhs of agriculture income. 4 lakhs of business income and 6 lakhs of agriculture income. I am saying find out the tax on whole income. Step number 2. I am saying now you have the tax for the whole 10 lakhs. Now you have the tax for the whole 10 lakhs. I do not want to pay tax on the agri part. I do not want to pay tax on the agri part. Is it possible for me to say compute tax on 2.5 to 8.5? It is easy for me to say compute tax on 8.5. It is easy for me to say compute tax on 8.5. Why Rahul 8.5? Because anyway 2.5 is 0. The tax on the 2.5 will show 0. Yes or no? So I am saying compute tax on agricultural income plus my basic exemption limit. Compute tax on my agricultural income plus my basic exemption limit. Yes or no? Hey, what is my basic exemption limit? 2.5. What is my agricultural income? 6 total becomes 8.5 so i am saying compute tax till the whole 8.5 so i am saying step number 1 compute tax till 10 lakhs so compute tax till 10 lakhs step number 2 i am saying compute tax till 8.5 lakhs compute tax till 8.5 lakhs if you remove the whole thing i mean sorry if you remove the 8.5 lakhs from the 10 lakhs what will be pending for you the amount which will be pending is this number the amount will be pending is this number. Indirectly, you would have come and said 1.5 lakhs ml at 20%. 1.5 lakhs ml at 20%. So, which means in simple words, step number 3 is 
tax as per step 1 minus tax as per step 2 tax as per step 1 minus tax as per step 2 tax as per step 1 minus tax as per step 2 in simple words what am i saying i am saying rahul first compute tax for the whole income then compute tax on the agriculture income plus basic exemption limit arrive at the differential tax that is what the tax i want from you that is what the tax i want from you this is called as partial integration this is called as partial integration yes or no yes or no yes yes now i told you for your finals individual may not be tested what you will be tested company yes so let's assume you are a company let's assume you are a company same logic 4 lakhs is your uh, business income 6 lakhs is your agricultural income 6 lakhs is your agricultural income what i told you first basic exemption limit varikom priority will be given to other income then priority will be given to agricultural income then balance will be taken then balance will be taken question to you companies basic exemption limit irka illiya does company have basic exemption limit no which means there is no basic exemption limit which means first priority will always directly be given to agri income yes so for the first 0 to for company do you have a slab model for company do you have a slab model no which means every income is 25 or 22 or 30 or 15 so i am saying for 0 to 6 lakhs for 0 to 6 lakhs this will be called as 30 percent it will be agree income 30 22 whatever it is yes then balance number is 4 lakhs balance number is 4 lakhs which means this will become 10 lakhs this will also be 30 percent this will be other income yes or no now i am telling what you have to do rahul i want tax only on the 6 lakhs to 10 lakhs part i want tax only on the 6 lakhs to 10 lakhs part tell me no does it make sense does it make sense even if i had ignored this and i would have put 0 to 4 lakhs i would have put 0 to 4 lakhs it would have still been 30 percent only it would have still been 30 percent only which means even though you asked for tax sorry even though you asked tax from here had you put tax from here also it would have been the same number yes or no because tax rate has never changed tax rate has never changed in this scenario do you think part, uh, doing partial integration makes sense or do you think exempting agriculture income makes sense exempting agriculture makes sense in simple words income tax comes and says partial integration will only apply to assessees will only apply to assessees having having slab rate model will only apply to assessees having slab rate model if you are an assessee not having a slab rate model but a fixed income tax rate then there is no point of me doing partial integration because no matter what i try number will be the same no matter what i try number will be the same yes or no yes or no this is what first rule this is what first rule any doubts no no yes that is why i told you for your syllabus it may not be very relevant it may not be very relevant because for your syllabus you will only have companies or firms you'll have only companies or firms both of them have a single rate both of them have a single rate so there is no point of me doing partial integration for those people yes or no yes so therefore partial integration will not apply for companies and firms it will only apply for slab rate people it will only apply for slab rate people yes or no yes or no second rule they are coming and one second now second rule they are coming and saying if you want to apply partial integration for slab rate people also if you want to apply partial integration for slab rate people also government is expecting something from you government is expecting something from you imagine no current year my agriculture income is only 200 rupees current year my agriculture income is only 200 rupees and my business income is showing 1 crore my business income is showing 1 crore do you think the 200 rupees will make an impact for me do you think the 200 rupees will make an impact for me at the best how much will you earn 60 rupees you learn at the best 60 rupees plus some surcharge plus some session all you learn yes does that number make so much significance no income tax came and said rahul I don't want every single person doing this partial integration. Waste of time and efforts. Waste of time and efforts. Do this partial integration only if your agricultural income goes beyond 5,000. If your agricultural income goes beyond 5,000. If the agriculture income is less than 5,000, you can ignore partial integration for slab rate people also. You can come and say it is exempt. You can come and say it is exempt. Only if the agricultural income goes beyond 5,000, I will come and say you have to do partial integration. You have to do partial integration. Yes, ma. Pratania, any doubts? Partial integration, I get the logic. 
Yeah. yeah, what we'll do now, we'll do a sum around it, Tanya. Once I do the sum now, I'll, I'll probably explain it to you better that time. Okay, I'm just trying to give you the logics right now. Okay, so partial integration, two things are happening. One I'm saying is that it should be for a slab rate person. Second, I'm saying that it should be for a person who's having income of agriculture at least more than 5,000. At least more than 5,000. Yes or no? Yes. Let's do one thing. Let's do one sum and see how it makes sense. Let's do one sum and make sense. The question is here. The question is here. It says, if the total income other than agriculture income of Mr. Scott is given as 5 lakh 30, how much? 5 lakh 30. I am saying that my normal income is 5 lakh 30,000. My normal income is 5 lakh 30,000. You are required to compute the tax if he is 25 years old. If he is 25 years old and has earned a net agriculture income of 3 lakh 10,000. So I am now informed that my agriculture income is 3 lakh. 10,000. My agriculture income is 3,10,000. Ignore the provisions of 115 BSE. Ignore the provisions of 115 BSE. They want to do it as per normal rates. They want to do it as per normal rates. Now, first of all, tell me the total. What is the total? It is 8,40,000. Yes or no? So, which means current year actually the person earned 8,40,000. Current year actually the person earned 8,40,000. But income tax, this is exempt. So, therefore, his total income is actually only 5,30,000. Yes or no? Total income is actually 5 lakh 30. Now let's do one thing. Let's first compute tax on 5 lakh 30. Let's first compute tax on 5 lakh 30. How will you compute, ma? For the first, uh, for the first 2.5 lakhs, it will become 0. Then 2.5 to 5 lakhs, it will become at the rate of 5 percent. Number is 12,500. Balance is 30,000 at the rate of 20 percent number is 6000 total becomes 18500 do you have a rebate do you have a rebate no you don't have a rebate because it is more than 5 lakhs add says number hitting 500 into 4 percent ma seven 40, uh, 740. Total becomes 19,240. Yes, this is what my actual tax would have been. This is what my actual tax would have been. Any doubts? No. Now, let's do one thing. Let's follow the steps. Let's follow the steps. Step number one was finding tax on finding tax on 840. Finding tax on 840. Yes or no? How will you do it? For the first 2.5 lakhs, it is 0. For the first 2.5 lakhs, it is 0. Next to 2.5 lakhs, it is 12,500. Balance is 3.4 lakhs at the rate of 20 percent. Number 68,000. 68,000. Yes, total. Total is 80,500. 80,500. Are you rich, poor, middle class? 8 lakh 40 ma. You are rich, poor, or middle class? You are middle class. So, therefore, add says number. Huh? 3,220. Total 83,720. Uh, 83,720. Yes or no? Yes or no? This is step number one. This is step number one. What is step number two, Raul? Step number two is computing tax on agriculture income plus basic exemption limit. What is my agriculture income? 3,10,000. What is my basic exemption limit? 2.5 lakhs. So, 3,10,000 ,10 plus 2.5 will give me? 5,60,000. Yes or no? Yes. Now, what I am going to do? I am saying for the first 2.5 lakhs, it is 0. For the next 2.5 lakhs, it is 12,500. For the balance, 60,000 at the rate of 20 percent. Number is huh? 12,000. Total becomes 24,500. Add health and education says at the rate of 4 percent. Number 980 total becomes 
ओके फोर हंड्रेड एंड एटी यस ऑन नो यस वॉट इज स्टेप नंबर थ्री राहुल स्टेप नंबर थ्री यस स्टेप वन माइनस स्टेप टू सो थर्ट एटी थ्री माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव एटी थ्री माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव नंबर फिफ्टी एट थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी यस नोटिस नो सेम पर्सन सेम पर्सन सेम टोटल इनकम हाउ मच वॉज द टोटल इनकम फाइव लैक थर्टी फॉर द सेम टोटल इनकम हैड आई डन नॉर्मल आई वुड हैव पेड ओनली नाइनटीन थाउजेंड हैड आई डन नॉर्मल आई वुड हैव पेड ओनली नाइनटीन थाउजेंड बट नाउ आफ्टर आई एम डूइंग पार्शियल इंटीग्रेशन आई एम पेइंग फिफ्टी एट थाउजेंड आई एम पेइंग फिफ्टी एट थाउजेंड वाई एम आई पेइंग फिफ्टी एट थाउजेंड राहुल थिंक अबाउट इट वॉट आई एम गोइंग डू आई एम गो प्रिपेयर माई चार्ट I'm going to prepare my scale. I'm going to prepare my scale. Yes, my scale will say zero to first slab is two point five. First slab is two point five lakhs. In this two point five lakhs, I'm going to park other income, agri income, other income. I'm going to park other income. So I'm parking two point five lakhs of other income. Yes. How much was my other income, Rahul? Overall, five lakh three, five lakh thirty thousand. In that five lakh thirty, two point five I parked off. I parked off. 2.5. Yes or no? Yes. Next, I am going to park everything. First priority, agriculture. How much is my agriculture income? Three lakh ten thousand. Yes. What is my next slab, Rahul? My next slab is five lakhs. So, which means this 2.5 lakhs, I am going to park agri income. Yes or no? Yes. Leaving me with sixty thousand of agri. Leaving me with sixty thousand of agri. So, I am going to say five point six lakhs la. It will become. Sixty thousand again. It is agree. Again, it is agree. Yes or no? Yes. Now I have exhausted my agree. I have exhausted my agree. I am left off with other income. I am left off with other income. In that other income, I had five lakh thirty of other income. I have utilized two point five lakhs of other income. Which left income is two point three lakhs. This two point three lakhs will end up giving me eight point four. Eight point four. कितनी मैं 2.3 पॉइंट थ्री वारूँ टू पॉइंट एट टू पॉइंट एट कूड़ा हाँ ओके करेक्ट टू पॉइंट एट टू पॉइंट एट लैक्स यस ऑन नो दिस टू पॉइंट एट लैक्स इज गोइंग टू बी माय अदर इनकम यस नो दिस इज माय स्केल दिस इज माय स्केल इन दिस स्केल टेल मी विच वन इज टैक्सेबल विच वन इज नॉट टैक्सेबल जीरो टू टू पॉइंट फाइव टैक्सेबल नॉट टैक्सेबल इट इज टैक्सेबल बट द बेसिक एक्सेम्शन इज देर सो देर फोर जीरो देर फोर जीरो यस अग्री इनकम टैक्सेबल नॉट टैक्सेबल Not taxable, so therefore zero. Agri income taxable, not taxable, not taxable. Mitcha income is taxable. Now this two point eight is falling between what slab? It is falling within the slab of five two ten. Yes or no? So which means this two point eight lakhs will be taxable at the rate of twenty percent. Number is fifty six thousand. Yes or no? Yes. On this fifty six thousand, this is my final tax. So therefore I have to add health and education cess at the rate of Four percent number is two thousand two forty. Total is fifty eight thousand two hundred and forty. Where did I see this number earlier, Raul? Is this the same number? Is the same number? Yes. Basically, income tax is coming and saying, "Dear Rahul, I do understand agriculture income is exempt from income tax, but at the end of the day, you did earn that income. You did earn that income. You earning that income has increased your slab." You earning that income has increased your slab, so I do want the tax on that increase the slab only. I want the tax on that increase the slab only. Don't come and say me that the income is exempt, therefore I'll pay lower tax. No, at the end of the day you have earned that income. You have earned that income. You were liable for the five to ten lakh slab. You were liable for the five to ten lakh slab, so I want tax on that five to ten lakh slab only. I want tax on that five to ten lakh slab only. I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I want that tax. I want that tax. Yes or no? Yes. How to do that, Rahul? They are saying for the first basic exemption limit allocate. Other income, then start with agri income, and then go to other incomes. Then go to other incomes. This is what the process is. Yes. If you understand the scale model, then great. If you don't understand the scale model, you can do the step one. You can do the step model. Step number one is compute tax on all incomes. Step number two is compute tax on agri income plus basic exemption limit. Step number three is one minus two. Step number three is one minus two. Please understand. Step three la you have to do one. Minus two of all tax of all tax, which means agriculture income for the reco. Step one minus step two is after doing cess. Step one minus step two is after doing cess. Don't do cess after step three. Cess will happen before step three. Cess will happen before step three. So what rebate you want to give? What surcharge you want to give? Fully complete that. Final answer can difference panano. Final answer can difference panano. Assume that two different persons are there. Compute the full tax, then do a difference. Compute the 
full tax and then do a difference. Ritanya, now do you understand? Yes. All clear? Do you want me to explain it once again? The answer will not significantly change. That is why I have not done it. That is why I have not done it. But technically, it is better to do it. Technically, it is better to do it. I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Assuming that this person was having a surcharge, assuming that the person was having a surcharge, CES would have come including that surcharge. Yes or no? So, CES would have come including that surcharge. If you do CES later on, what will happen is you will give CES only on the difference number. You will give CES only on the difference number. But if you do it in step 1, what will happen? CES will come on the increase the surcharge. Step 2 will also have CES on increase the surcharge that will always be a better answer that will always be a better answer it is recommended that you do it after cess it is recommended that you do it after cess in my book i did not do it because in my book cess surcharge and all did not come okay in my book the answer will not change in my book the answer will not change but the answer will change in case you have a surcharge scenario so it is always better to do it after cess it is always better to do it after cess in case it is not there in the book please note it down Yes, yes. We will do one more question on this and then we will move to the next chapter. Look at the question. It says, Mr. X is a resident and has provided you the following particulars of his income for the previous year 23-24. Okay. They say income from salary which is computed for him is 4 lakhs. Income from house property which is computed for him is 3 lakh 80,000. Agriculture income which is earned from a land in Jaipur is 4 lakh. 50,000. Expenses which has incurred for earning the agriculture income is 1 lakh 60,000. Yes, step number one, always first to find out how much is my other income, how much is my agri income. Total my other income, total my other income, 4 lakh my plus 3 lakh 80 will give you 7 lakh 80. Yes or no? Will give you 7 lakh 80. Next, agri income is 4 lakh 50 minus 1 lakh 60. 4 lakh 50 minus 1 lakh 60. 2 lakh 90,000. Yes. What is my total income, Rahul? My total income is only 7 lakh 80. Yes or no? My total income is only 7 lakh 80. This is my agricultural income. This is my agricultural income. The question is saying you are asking you to compute the tax liability assuming his age is 40 years and 75 years. Assuming his age is 40 years and 75 years. In question, have they told you which regime to choose for? No. Which means you need to you need to do both you need to do both or option number two you can come and say rahul i know that my new regime will show lower rate my default regime will show lower rate so i am directly doing default regime i am directly doing default regime how to decide rahul marks will decide marks will decide if there is four mark question you have to do both if it is a two mark question you will do only one you will do only one in this i am a little lazy so i am only going to do one regime i am only going to do one regime which regime do you want default or alternate let's do default Okay, so we're going to do default regime. Yes. So in my default regime, I'm going to put out the facts right now. My facts are my total income is seven lakh eighty thousand. My total income is seven lakh eighty thousand. My agricultural income is two lakh ninety thousand. Two lakh ninety thousand. Ah, what is step number one, Rahul? Find out the tax on. Find out the tax on the overall total. The overall total. Total this overall. Ten lakh seventy thousand. Huh? Yes. So step number one. Find out the tax on ten lakh seventy thousand. Find out the tax on ten lakh seventy thousand. Hey, we are in which regime? We are in default regime. So in default regime, what will happen? You have to do up to three lakhs. Up to 3 lakhs number is 0. Then 3 lakhs to 6 lakhs at the rate of number is 15,000. Number is 15,000. Then 6 lakhs to 9 lakhs at what rate? 10 percent. Therefore, it is 30,000. Then 9 lakhs to 10 lakhs 70,000. 9 lakhs to 10 lakhs 70,000 at what rate? It will be at 15%. So, 1,70,000 at 15% rate number. 
वन लाख सेवेंटी इंटू फिफ्टीन परसेंट सॉरी ट्वेंटी फाइव फाइव हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी फाइव फाइव हंड्रेड दिस इज वॉट माई टोटल बेसिक टैक्स विल बी नंबर सेवेंटी थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड सेवेंटी थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड आर यू रिच पुअर मिडिल क्लास आई एम रिच पुअर मिडिल क्लास आई एम मिडिल क्लास टेन लैक्स इज मिडिल क्लास कैटेगरी सो देर फोर इट विल बिकम एड वॉट हेल्थ एंड एजुकेशन सेस एट द रेट ऑफ फोर परसेंट टू एट टू जीरो देर फोर इट विल बिकम सेवेंटी थ्री थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी नो 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 सेवेंटी हाँ थ्री हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी दिस इज माई स्टेप नंबर वन दिस इज माई स्टेप नंबर वन यस हाँ नेक्स्ट स्टेप नंबर next is step number 2 compute tax on agri income plus very good agri income plus basic exemption limit hey rahul my basic exemption limit is 3 lakhs my basic exemption limit is 3 lakhs so therefore it is tax on 5 lakh 90000 tax on 5 lakh 90000 which means again up to 3 lakhs it will become zero then 3 lakhs to फाइव लैख नाइंटी थाउजेंड विल बी एट द रेट ऑफ फाइव परसेंट सो देर फोर इट इज टू लैख नाइंटी थाउजेंड इंटू फाइव परसेंट इट इज टू लैख नाइंटी थाउजेंड इंटू फाइव परसेंट नंबर विल कम एस फोर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड नंबर विल कम एस फोर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड सो देर फोर माई बेसिक टैक्स विल बिकम फोर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड माई बेसिक टैक्स विल कम एस फोर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव Add health and education says at the rate of four percent number five hundred and eighty or eighty five hundred and eighty. Therefore, it will become fifteen thousand zero eight zero fifteen thousand zero eight zero. Yes or no? Yes. What is step number three, Rahul? Step three is. Step one minus step two, so seventy three three twenty minus fifteen thousand eighty. Sixty eight two forty. Fifty eight. Fifty eight thousand two forty. This is what your final tax payable will be. This is what your final tax payable will be. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Ali, all the all clear? All clear? Any doubts? Any doubts? No. <coughs> Shall we go forward? Shall we go forward? Yes. Two rules I want to keep in mind. Two rules I want you to keep in mind. It's not there in the book. It's logical. It's logical. Therefore, I want you to keep in mind. Okay. Rule number one. Rule number one. Partial integration only makes sense. If your total income is more than the basic exemption limit, what happens? Partial integration only makes sense if your total income is more than the basic exemption limit. Rahul, why are you telling me this? Understand? This is my scale. This is my scale. Yes, I am coming and saying that Rahul, current year my total income itself is only two lakh rupees. How much my total income? Two lakh rupees. So I am coming and saying, Rahul, whenever you do the basic exemption limit, first priority should be given to my other income. First priority should be given to my other income. Now. My other income, like basic exemption limit, is up to two point five lakhs. Yes, but my other income is only two lakhs. Yes or no? 
my other income is only 2 lakhs. If my other income is already only 2 lakhs, this gap is there in the middle. Yes or no? This gap, like, what will I put? Agricultural income. This gap, I like, will put agricultural income. Then balance whatever agricultural income, that also I will put here. Yes or no? Yes. Now tell me, this is all that is your income. This is all that is your income. Other income, like, this is what your income is. Your other income is only this much in the 2 lakhs category. Your other income is only that. 2 lakh category. Will you have a tax? Will you have a tax? Tax here will be 0. For that agricultural part, tax will be 0. For this also, tax will be 0. Yes or no? Which means, when your other income itself is less than basic exemption limit, is there a possibility that you will have a tax payable? No. Which means, do you have to do partial integration? No. Okay. So, one silent rule for you. If you do not have a basic exemption limit itself, there is no point of you doing a tax payable. There is no point of you doing a tax payable. You can directly say partial integration is not applicable because anyway everything is going to become zero. Anyway everything is going to become zero. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Next. 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 Next to silent rule, I am saying that partial integration only makes sense. Partial integration only makes sense if the partial integration is going to help you change the slab. If the partial integration is only going to help you change the slab, what do I mean, Rahul? Again, let's take my scale. Let's take my scale. Yes, I have another income. I have another income of, let's say, 2.7 lakhs. I have another income of 2.7 lakhs, and my agriculture income is showing 30,000. My agriculture income is showing 30,000. My overall is 3 lakhs. Yes or no? My overall is 3 lakhs. Now, what will happen, Rahul? First priority up to 2.5 lakhs will go to other income, which means this is all other income. How much is my other income left, Ma? 20,000. Yes, but I will first give priority to agricultural income. So, 2.5 lend the 2.8 will be agricultural income. Yes or no? Which 2.8 lend the 20,000 will be other income. Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, tell me what are the tax rates? Tell me what is the tax rates for other income taxes? First other income it is zero. For this agriculture income it is five percent. It is five percent. This other income is also five percent. Yes or no? Yes or no? No, 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 no. On the first part will I pay tax? No. On this tax is zero. On agricultural part also tax is zero. Other income tax will be five percent. Yes or no? Which means, which means Rahul, even if I had not put this agricultural income, even if I had not put this agricultural income, this would have still been taxable at 5%. Yes or no? I could have directly put what? I could have put 0 to 2.7 lakhs. Yes or no? Where what would have happened? 2.5 lakhs would have been my other income, which was anyway 0. Mitchell 20,000 could have been my other income, which could have been 5%. Now, inge portalo adada, na inge portalo adada. Is partial integration helping me in any way? Is partial integration helping me in any way? No, partial integration is not helping me in any way. In which case, do you think partial integration is making sense? Not making sense. Not making sense. In which case, you can ignore it off. Rahul, why did partial integration not make sense? Because understand your slab did not change. Your slab did not change. The reason I'm asking you to do this partial integration is because your total income overall, including the agriculture income, may end up asking you higher tax. May end up asking you higher tax. In this scenario, are you ending up with higher taxes? Are you ending up with higher taxes? No, you're not ending up with higher taxes because the slab has not changed. The slab has not changed. If I had my slab to change, if I wanted my slab to change, this should have bare minimum been at least 3,30,000. This should have bare minimum been at least 3,30,000. Why Rahul? Then it would have become 6 lakhs. Yes, no. Then it would have become 6 lakhs. In which case, what I would have done? I would have said for the first 2.5 lakhs will be my other income. Then I will prioritize agricultural income till what extent till 5 lakhs and then another 1 lakh 30 so 6 lakh 30 thousand and then i would have brought my other income for an additional 20 thousand yes or no you do correct up on it 2.5 this will be 80 thousand no so 5 lakh 80 this will be 5 lakh 80 and this will become 6.0 this will become 6.0. Now understand 2.5 to 5 is my agri income. 5 to 5.8 is my agri income. 5.8 to others is my other income. 
Yes or no? Yes. Now, this is going to be not taxable. This is going to be not taxable. This is going to be not taxable. Other income is going to be how much? 20 percent. Yes. Had I not done partial integration, it would have been 5 percent. Now, it has become 20 percent. You see the slab is changing. See the slab is changing. Only then partial integration makes sense. Only then partial integration makes sense, which means in a scenario where your partial integration is not going to change your slab, where your partial integration is not going to change your slab, don't bother about it. Don't bother about it. You can continue with the normal thing. You can say partial integration not applicable. You can say partial integration not applicable. Two rules I am telling you. These rules are not there in the act. These rules are not there in the act. It comes from the computation. It comes from the computation. If you try to do computation, you will realize partial integration is not helping you. You will realize partial integration is not helping you. So, you can automatically do it. You can automatically do it. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Two simple rules to keep in mind. Two simple rules to keep in mind. Any doubts? Any doubts? No, you can if you want note it down or you can let it go. If you want, you can note it down or you can let it go because from final level syllabus, agriculture income is not being tested. It's not being tested, so it's not important. But in case of a question on this, just be careful about it. Okay. The question which will come in exam will not come and tell you to do partial integration. The question will exam will come and say there is another income, there is an agriculture income, find a tax. Find a tax. You need to be careful about the fact that agriculture income is not exempt, agriculture income is partially integrated. Agriculture income is partially integrated. Going forward, whenever we discuss, going forward, whenever we discuss, we will never use the word as agriculture income being exempt. We will say agriculture income is partially integrated. Yes or no? Yes. We will say agriculture income is partially integrated so that we remember in future that whenever there is a tax, we will not say it is exempt, it is partially integrated. But yes, if the person is a non slab rate person, we will say exempt. We will say exempt. Clear? Clear? Any doubts? No doubts. Can we go forward? Can we go forward? Yes. Awesome. This marks the end of your part A of the syllabus. This marks the end of your part A of the syllabus. We are done with our part A of the syllabus and we'll be moving on to our part B. And we're moving on to our part B, which is our computation of total income. We'll be moving on to our part B, which is our computation of total income. Like I told you, we'll be starting with PGBP. We'll be starting with PGBP. Since we are short on time today, I will not start with PGBP. What I'm going to do is, I told you, as a part of your syllabus, salaries and HP have been removed. Salaries and HP have been removed. But questions around that are still coming. Questions around that are still coming. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this notes. You have one page now in the middle. You have one page in the middle called 33. Yes, on this 33, we are going to write the notes which are relevant for HP and salaries. We are going to write the notes which are relevant for HP and salaries. From exam perspective, this alone is enough. From exam perspective, this alone is enough. You don't have to read the whole HP. You don't have to read the whole salaries. What notes I give you will should suffice. What notes I give you should suffice. Okay. Can we write the notes? Yes, let's write the notes. Let's write the notes. Heading will be called as taxation of salaries. What is adding? Taxation of salaries. Yes. Now, if you remember from your inter syllabus, inter syllabus, like, there was something many things, you no know, basic, DA, HRA, this allowance, that allowance, and all those things. Nothing is there for exam. Nothing is there for exam. The only thing which you need to keep in mind is whenever you have a salaries, whenever you have a salaries, you are mandatory to give three deductions under section 16. You are mandatory to give three deductions under section 16. Deduction number one is called as your standard deduction. What deduction? Standard deduction. Raul, how much is the amount? How much is the amount? Amount is 50,000. Standard deduction amount is 50,000. Yes or no? Yes or no? Second deduction is professional tax paid. Second deduction is professional tax paid. Now, this payment can happen either by employer or can happen by employee. It doesn't matter. Okay. Whatever professional tax has been paid either by the employer or by the employee can be claimed as a deduction. Can be claimed as a deduction. Third item is entertainment allowance. What is the third item? Entertainment allowance only for any idea? 
only for government employees. Entertainment allowance only for government employees. Yes, yes. Which means in exam, in exam, they will come and say that Rahul, there is a person called A. He has received thirty thousand per month salary. He has received thirty thousand per month salary, which means his overall salary is three lakh sixty. His overall salary is three lakh sixty. In that, you will give three deductions. What deductions? Standard deduction, professional tax, entertainment allowance. Now, entertainment allowance has some limits and everything. Therefore, this is not coming for exam. This is definitely not coming for exam. So you can ignore entertainment allowance. You can ignore entertainment allowance because they have some deductions and everything. It will not come for exam. It will not come for exam. The only two items which are coming for exam is standard deduction, professional tax. So in the question, if they come and say Rahul, there is a person who has received forty thousand rupees per month salary. Forty thousand rupees per month salary. Please understand, he has received per month. He has received per month, which means this is the total amount which is received. This is the total amount which is received. So four forty thousand into twelve will give you four lakh eighty thousand. I don't want the amount which he received. I want the income from. Salary, so I have to give fifty thousand deduction. I have to give a fifty thousand deduction separately. If the question comes and says that professional tax is paid, you will claim that also. You will claim that also. Yes or no? Yes. Now Rahul, like I told you, since we have started the computation of total income, I told you every time I complete a chapter, I will also tell you what happens in the regimes. What happens in the regimes? So we need to talk about two regimes. We need to talk about two regimes. One regime is called as default regime. The other regime is called as alternate regime. The other regime is called as default regime. First regime is called as default regime. The second regime is called as alternate regime. Now, default regime le you will lose deductions, or alternate regime le you lose deductions. You will lose deductions in default because default is nothing but one one five BSC. Yes, income tax is coming and saying if you are in default regime, you cannot claim professional tax. You cannot claim entertainment allowance. You cannot claim professional tax. You cannot claim entertainment allowance. You can claim in alternate regime both. You can claim alternate regime both. Yes, current year amendment. Current year amendment. Till last year, standard deduction could have been claimed only in alternate regime. In current year, you can also claim this for default regime. Which means in the current year, income tax is come and said if you opt for default regime, even in default regime, you are permitted for standard deduction of fifty thousand. You are permitted for standard deduction of fifty thousand, which means going forward in exam, the moment you see a salary heading, whether it is special regime or it is normal regime, you will give standard deduction. You will give standard deduction. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. This is what your income from salaries is. This is what your income from salaries is. Now in exam, I told you professional tax may not come, entertainment allowance may not come, standard deduction will come. Standard deduction will come. How to know whether you should give standard deduction or not? Yes. How to know whether you should give standard deduction or not? Rules are like this. Rules are like this. If the question says, if the, what are the scenarios when you should give standard deduction? What are the scenarios where you should not give standard deduction? Yes. Assuming you see a question, assuming I see a question, the question says income from salary within bracket computed, income from salary within bracket computed. It means standard deduction is given, not given. It is already given, which means should you give? Should you give? No. So therefore, do not give standard deduction when it is already computed. Don't give standard deduction when it is already computed. Yes, this is when you should not give a standard deduction. Second, they did not use the word computed Rahul, but the wording says income from salaries. The wording says income from salaries. It means it is already given, not given. Already given. So which means should you give, not give? Should not give. So therefore, if heading says. If what? Heading says income from salaries. If what heading says income from salaries? Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, when should you give standard deduction? When should you give standard deduction? If salary is given on month basis.
what has happened salary is given on month basis question is clear that the person has received 20000 per month it means obviously that is the basic salary only that is the basic salary only which means you have to give standard deduction second they say if question says this salary is received the salaries received what do you mean by that rahul i hey, understand now if the question comes and says that there is a person there is a person who has received 3 lakh rupees who has received 3 lakh rupees it means he has got in hand 3 lakhs am i bothered about what he got in hand no i am bothered about what is his income now if he has got 3 lakhs in hand meaning 3 lakhs is his basic salary which means you need to give him standard deduction you need to give him standard deduction yes or no yes so these are the two scenarios these are the two scenarios scenario number 1 if the salary is given on month basis scenario number 2 is if the salary is given on received basis when you should not give standard deduction if it is already computed or the heading says income from salary clear clear yes this is for taxation of salaries idu matto poru idu matto poru next is your heading called as taxation of taxation of ifhp taxation of ifhp yes yes in taxation of ifhp you don't have an option you don't have an option you have to read the full format you have to read the full format there is only one benefit for you they may not ask you how to compute gav they may not ask you how to compute gav in inter you would have learned no municipal value or fair rent whichever is higher versus standard rent whichever is lower that may not be required that may not be required but everything else is mandatory everything else is mandatory which means you need to prepare the format you need to prepare the format format is sop then lop then dlop sop lop and dlop uh, start from start from gav start from gav a hey, sop ku gav irukuma irukada irukadu lop ku irukum dlop irukum yes yes next after gav you will reduce municipal tax actually paid by owner municipal tax actually paid by owner if you remember from your inter syllabus municipal tax have two conditions first condition it should be paid in the current year second condition it should be paid by the owner yes both the conditions to be satisfied both the conditions to be satisfied hey will you get an mt for sop will you get an mt for sop no will you get it for lop yes will you get it for dlop yes yes you will get it for sop and dlop this will arrive at what is called as nav this will arrive at something what is called as nav in sop nav is zero in sop nav is zero lop nav is number there and dlop also number is there dlop also number is there yes or no yes from this you would have reduced something called as deductions under section 24 deductions under section 24 in that the first item which you would have reduced is called as 30% of nav standard yes the standardly they are coming and saying 30% of nav remove it off 30% of nav remove it off will it have for sop no will you have it for lop yes will you have it for dlop yes yes now understand the moment you reduce 30% of nav no other expenses can be claimed so repairs or uh, renovation ground rent any other charges light charges and all those things not allowed any other charges and all is not allowed yes or no yes or no yes second rahul you are eligible for interest on loan you are eligible for interest on loan yes or no yes or no yes so two items which will be allowed as deduction one item is called as 30% of nav second item is called as interest on loan in income tax interest on loan is fully allowed as a deduction when it comes to lop property it is fully allowed as deduction if it comes to dlop property yes no restrictions no restrictions in sop property in sop property i will come and ask you dear sir tell me are you opting for default regime or are you opting for alternate regime are you opting for default regime or are you opting for alternate regime if you say rahul i am opting for default regime no deduction for you no deduction for you no allowance no 
allowance. This is what says. This is what it says. If you are opting for alternate regime, if you are opting for alternate regime, you can claim maximum two lakhs per annum. You can claim maximum two lakhs per annum. Yes or no? Yes. Now, if you remember the, all those provisions and all, there are some conditions. You satisfy three conditions. Loan should be taken after 1999. Loan should be taken for acquisition. Loan should, house should be completed within five years. You satisfy all that condition, you'll get two lakhs. You don't satisfy any one of the condition, you'll get thirty thousand. You'll get thirty thousand. So that conditions are there. In exam, I have not seen a scenario where they ask you thirty thousand cases and all. Okay, so they'll only ask you two lakh scenarios. So simple default regime in the no deduction, alternate regime in the deduction, alternate regime in the deduction. This will arrive at what you call as income from house property. this will arrive at what you call as income from house property yes or no yes this is what your income from house property looks like this is what your income from house property looks like in simple words if i have to come and explain to you sop porto rico income from house property will always be zero sop porto rico income from house property will always be zero if it is default regime if it is default regime if it is alternate regime you will get the deduction of the iol you will get the reduction of iol lop dlop does not matter whether you follow alternate regime or does not matter if you follow default regime both are the same both are the same the one question which may probably come in exam is called as arrears of rent or unrealized rent what rent arrears of rent or unrealized rent if ici does not want to test you on so much format if ici does not want to test you on so much format they will directly give you one item called as arrears of rent or unrealized rent now what is arrears of rent or unrealized rent rent of the past years rent of the past years which you had received earlier which you were supposed to receive earlier but did not receive which you were supposed to receive earlier but you did not receive you received it today you received it today income tax says it is fully taxable income tax says it is fully taxable provision come and say if you have unrealized rent or arrears of rent it is fully taxable in the year of in the year of receipt in the year of receipt even if you are not the owner today fully taxable in the year of receipt even if you are not the owner today question will come and say rahul there is a property which you sold off there is a property which you sold off when you had the property 20000 was supposed to be received you did not receive it current year you received the 20000 taxable not taxable taxable because even if you don't have the property the house was pertaining to earlier years rent was also pertaining to earlier years it will become taxable but 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 you are eligible for you are eligible for the 30% of nav deduction You are eligible for 30 percent of NAV deduction. I say loves to play here only. I say loves to play here only. What they'll come and say in the question, they'll come and say, Rahul, a person has received a rent of 20,000. A person has received a rent of 20,000 pertaining to older years. Pertaining to older years, current year he does not have the house. Taxable, not taxable, taxable. How much taxable, Rahul? 20,000 is not taxable, it is 20,000 minus 30 percent of 20,000, which means 6,000 will be removed. Neft of number is 14,000, which is taxable. Left off number is 14,000, which is taxable, which means in this also you have to follow the same salaries concept. In this also you have to follow the same salaries concept. If the question comes and says rent received, if the question comes and says rent received, you have to give 30 percent deduction. If the question comes and says income from house property computed, you will not give the deduction. Okay, you have to look at the question properly. You have to look at the question properly. If the question says rent is received, then you have to give 30 percent deduction. If the question says income from house property or the question says house property computed, you will say no deduction to be put granted, no deduction to be granted. So the rules on the top, the rules on the top will seem just like the copy paste for, will seem just like the copy paste for HP, will seem just like the copy paste for HP. From exam perspective, this too is enough. From exam perspective, this page alone is enough. If you read this much alone, it is enough for your exam purposes. Beyond that, these two chapters, nothing else will be tested. Nothing else will be tested. Clear? Clear? Why am I putting it out proud right now? Because we will go to international taxation, and international taxation, individual taxation will come. In international taxation, individual taxation will come when that comes that time we will discuss when that comes that time we will discuss so right now we will need this for double taxation relief and so i'm putting it out right now for you clear yes yes great we are out of time so let's complete the day for today next class we're going to start with
PGBP. Next class, we're going to start with PGBP. So please revise your party income. Please revise your whole party income. PGBP will take references from party also. Okay, so please revise your party income. Next class, we will start PGBP. There is a big chapter. There is a big chapter. I will tell you how much to read only. I will tell you how much to read. I will teach you everything, but I will tell you from exam perspective also how much to read. Some things are not very relevant from exam. At the same time, in my book, you will find some special adjustments and everything also, which should help you in exam because these are past exam questions. Okay, so PGBP in my book should be a clear cut, simple chapter, which I should help you in a easiest manner. Yes, so please prepare and come for party so that we can move to part C. All right. Yes, Ritani, any doubts? Can we go forward? All right, perfect. Thank you, people. Have a good day.